Waterboarding. We're talking about wakeboarding. The thing about wakeboarding, every trick is an invert. Backside. Backside. Air railing. I can hear you too. Right in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. Another episode of the Grab Matters podcast today. We got Clark <clears throat> Davis on. There's a lot of introductions I could do for Clark, but legend, legend of the sport. So, <laughs> how many pennies do you think are on this table, Clark? Um, that is going to be maybe ten dollars. Ten bucks? How many I pennies is that? I've that's ten thousand. Casey's 1, done this, dude. That's too many. Um, <laughs> Did you make it? Yeah. The sick table. Lots of super glue and uh, a lot of pennies. A lot of pennies. Yeah. A lot of pennies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so your Instagram is Clark Don't Gram. Why didn't you gram for so long? Um, well, uh, when we were first making jib, um, I started doing the Facebook stuff and then Alex started doing the Instagram stuff. And I just. I'm not very good at social media and I never got into it. And then all of a sudden Instagram is like everything. And I'm so far in the dust that it was just like, I'm not going to even do it. And then a couple of years at Jib and I've got like a hashtag Clark don't gram with like hundreds of posts. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I guess I'm going to transfer from facebook to instagram <laughs> i guess i'm in the gram now <laughs> so uh the name was open so it was just like this That's is a great the name. only thing to run i guess when did you <laughs> when did you when did you finally cave and jump on the gram uh once i saw quint post something on steez enough times on facebook that was like no one's seeing this and i was like yeah that's probably accurate <laughs> <laughs> so i was like we're gonna have to get with the, the movement here that uh, makes sense. It's fair. Are you, so, you like anti social media or you just weren't good at it? Didn't Not really. Like, really. like, my main thing was like, all right, it takes enough of my time to like post something to Facebook. Like, I don't want to take twice as much time to post something, the same thing to a, you know, I was just like, and even now, like, I post most of the shit to Instagram and I don't really fuck with Facebook just because yeah. it takes enough time as it is. And I feel like most people don't really fuck anyway. with Facebook anymore, anyways. All right, let's yeah. uh, let's jump back to kind of the early life, Clark Davis. Where did you grow up? Born and raised. Where you at? Yeah, uh, North Carolina, um, east coast of the states, out here. Um, wakeboarding started for me on uh, Blues Lake. Um, so let me set the scene here again. We're pre-social media. Um, I'm probably six or seven or something. We're talking, I guess, mid nineties and to late nineties, probably when I started actually riding. And, uh, as far as getting into wakeboarding, I kind of got lucky. Um, but also that kind of tells you like I've, I've been doing it basically forever. I think the first time I rode, I was like eight. Um, and I'm 34 now. So I've seen a lot of wake yeah. shit. But, um, so when my folks randomly decided they wanted to start hanging out at the lake in the summers, um, they got a little camper and we were out there and, uh, two doors down, there were two kids that were fucking good at wakeboarding. And this is, again, this is when wakeboarding is in its infancy. Like there's, there's not a whole lot of people even wakeboarding at all, much less people that are good. I mean, total number in the world at this time. You're talking, I don't know, but it's not a lot. Yeah. And I had these two guys that were perfect age for them to be older enough to where, I mean, let's, you know, let's say I was probably eight or something, and they're two brothers that were like maybe 11 and 12 or something. So just a big enough age gap where they would take me under their wing type deal. But once they were older, it was kind of like, hey, he's the little kid, like, but it worked out great. Like they were, like I said, really good at riding and um, just like idols to me. So their old man was all into the ski scene. Let's get up real early and get the glass and blah, blah. So they were kind of living the ski lifestyle. And as soon as they saw a wakeboard, they were like, all right, well, we're doing, if we've got to be on the water anyway, we're going to do this. Yeah. And then as soon as I saw them do that, I'm I like, up. hey, guys, you want to take me out? <laughs> So, um, 
I was kind of under their wing the whole time. Um, Solomon and Austin Holmes, that was the two brothers, legends. Um, they taught me a lot about everything. Um, so did you live on the lake at this point and they were no. like picking you up off the dock or? No. So it, this was a little, little camper on the lake and this was like pretty much a summer gig. Okay. Like as soon as we were out of school, we would spend the most of our time there. Gotcha. And that was about it. Okay. Um, and what? You remember what boat that was on? Probably like some ski boat that was yeah, uh, a pylon on it. Um, yeah, so um, Ski Supreme, I okay. believe is what yeah, they yeah. had. Yeah. And uh, so we were running that. Um, they eventually got a boat called the Wave, which I believe was Centurion and was all like bright purple and just said the Wave on the side of it. I've never seen another one of these actually. Um and the platform was like four foot long and it had ballast in it on the back and I, like the swim platform. Yeah. The swim platform was like four foot long and had ballast in the platform. So it was, I, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> it, it was, uh, so the platform is what's making the wake then like that's dragging in the water. Yeah. I've never heard. This is interesting. Yeah. Um, but it threw a wave, um, literally well, put I mean, a, yeah. put a, put a pylon on that guy but you know this was this was you know towards the end of my blues lake days um but you know so solomon he uh actually rode for neptune back in the day so like i said pretty good like style master um it was awesome like just learning everything from these guys um and so yeah i was you know like I said, there's no social media. There's no, I mean, at most we're watching like old wakeboard videos, you know, at this time, that's all, that's all that you see. Yeah. And so it's not like I was ever like, Oh, I'm gonna, I want to be a pro or I want to, that was never a thought in my head ever really. Thank like it was always just like, this is fun. We're just fucking having fun. And yeah, I wanted to be good more than anything, yeah. but just to be like Solomon, really. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, yeah, if, like get in a video or be, have a picture in the magazine. Like that would be the ultimate. That was like as far as I could see. And, um, but, you know, I also, uh, you know, never tried a, a flip or anything for like years. Really? So like, but also, you know, that, you know, I did, I, I probably did grabs and just fundamental shit for years before I even tried to do a trick, which ultimately I feel like probably helped me because yeah. I had like, you know, the basics and some style and everything before I got away from it. And another thing is like social media. Like I, I often wonder if I had grown up with it, would I have taken it more seriously or, or burned myself out already or gotten Done. bored with it by now or who yeah. knows, you Wait know, I, for the wrong reasons. Uh, yeah. Certain, so yeah. I kind of feel fortunate in that regard to have kind of missed the social media train and, um, just enjoyed writing like yeah. almost my entire upbringing. Um, which like I said, may be the reason I'm still doing it and hadn't burned myself on it, but, um, yeah. could be something to say for that. But, um, okay. So I guess this is what late nineties now, like maybe early two thousands, you're still riding on. That so way. yeah, late nineties. I'm, I'm thinking like the first boards that they, you know, Solomon had a scurf when they were first riding, but it wasn't long before um, the first board I rode was a uh, Impala Neptune, and it was a twin tip. Okay, but um, yeah, just kind of messing around, doing grabs, um, boot scooting around for a little while until. Uh, so I had a house in between Solomon Austin and I, and then a couple years after riding, that's when my buddy Sager moves in. It was actually my best man, lifelong friend. Um, and uh, so he's a little grommet. And uh, I'm probably like 10 or something. And he moves in and is like four years younger than me. And so at this point, like I said, I've been wakeboarding for years. Yeah. And uh, he comes in. And, of course, we get him and his older brother out on the boat. And he lands a back roll with his eyes closed, like, first week of riding. Yeah. And you want to talk about fuming. 
So I was not happy about that. I was like, who is this, this little, oh, my God, I'm going to have to try something in. now. This is <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> so that lit some fire under me. I started uh, started trying some stuff. And uh, uh, and then ultimately, um, Alex, who I started jib with, um, was on the other end of the lake. Um, and so we started kind of riding Hammer. with him. Yeah, Alex okay. Hammer. Yep, started riding with him some towards the end of my blues day. And uh, I guess anything that's, like, worth mentioning in between there, um, I'll say I left blues, like, kind of going into high school. Okay. My folks couldn't own the place at blues. They, like, constantly had to pay um, the, like, rent or whatever. You couldn't just buy it. So yeah. they moved to another lake where they could. And, um, so, and I guess worth mentioning in between really is, like I said, we were just having fun, like riding in the summers, but in between starting and moving, um, to the next lake, we had the pointless movie come out and that was huge. Um, I remember going over to our buddy's place and watching it and there, and I don't know if this is even true, but they were like, this movie's not even out yet. (laughs) This is, and we, we just watched it like 24 seven, like, yeah, so sick. And of course, like building rails and shit kind of started after that. And so we had, but again, like I'm still super young. So this is like Solomon Austin. Some of the older guys were like building rails and like, we're kind of seeing some of that. And, uh, but you know, I was too young to really even be hitting them. I think I hit the kicker that was like literally a thousand little pipes. So you would go into it. PVC pipes. Yeah. So you get, that's like straight kicker. So you go into it, your fins will just lock into whichever in between you got and your scent. <laughs> but like there was, I mean, they had some sketchy, like, you know, up gap flat and like just recreating pointless rails and like yeah, some obviously sketchy shit, but that was some good times. Um, but that's probably, you know, worth mentioning. That's about the extent of uh, the rest of the blues times out there. Okay, but then you moved, or your parents moved, or... Yeah, know, so, like? yeah, we went to another lake, and it was kind of high school deal, and um, there was some folks out there we were riding with and everything, but, you know, I had had some folks on blues that were, like, kind of into riding, or like, somewhat good, and on Baden, there was nobody really about riding. Um, Baden's the lake you guys moved on to? After. Yes, Um so it was kind of a different scene. I'm kind of like more pushing myself and blah, blah, blah. Um, but like I said, I wasn't really taking it ever too seriously. I wasn't like, all right, well, if, you know, if I work hard this summer, I might can get sponsored or something. It yeah. was just like, but however, I guess ironically towards the end of like my high school career, I started doing some tricks that in my head I was like, okay, like done like some sevens and Pete's whirly five and type shit. It was like, pretty good tricks yeah. like i'm not yeah. like i'm a pro or something but like this might be what i'm kind of good at um and then so as soon as i have that thought it's like all right well i'm moving to college and i'm not gonna wakeboard again for <laughs> next five years <laughs> so that was kind of well, so were there like any contests at that point that you were doing like we did some grassroots shit like okay. i did int um a couple of times and but i kind of got burned from contests because like you know, Alex would smoke me. Um, everyone would smoke me. And I just wasn't a good contest rider. And uh, like I said, I've always been more like a style guy. And I never have been like just heavy tricks. Like uh, on demand contest stuff. Yeah. Like my type of riding is really anti-contest. Like the thing that gets me off is like landing something new. So consequently, I'm just like always on that chase to land something new. So that doesn't really lend itself to consistency. Um, and I'll just blame it on that. But um, ultimately, <laughs> I wasn't a huge contest writer. But, um, yeah, I mean, I did a couple of the the small guys, like, back in the day, boat stuff. Yeah, yeah. But just that, nothing serious. Though. That was about it. Okay. And, and did you get any attention from any sponsors early on or anyone reaching out to, no, to shoot no, you board or anything? not even close. No. Okay. Um one thing I did kind of get into, though, as the uh, the Baden days were starting to progress and I was getting into high school, was filming and shooting videos. Yeah. And that's where I was starting to think, like, this is my shit. This is up my alley. Like, I just liked everything about it. Um, so I started getting into that. We're, um, You know, when I got into high school, I started actually 
skateboarding a little bit and hanging out with the skate crew, AKA also my high school band. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, like we were all just group of homies that they were educating me in the skate world as I'm getting into high school. So, um, that was a lot of fun. Jackass is coming out. It's, you know, we're just drinking beers and filming shit every weekend, that kind of deal. So, um, literally just making like jackass videos and skate videos like that got me going to like, I'm filming everything. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Um, and that was kind of what was going on at that time. Okay. So you're, you're more of like a creative like expression when it comes to boarding and stuff, rather film stuff, land new tricks as opposed to, you know, nothing in the contest scene is really pretty much getting you excited. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you're in high school now, you're still wakeboarding, you know, on what was the lake called? Baden. Baden Lake. Um, and then run me through kind of graduating high school and you said you were going to go to college and then kind of never wakeboard again. Yeah. Well, I mean, that wasn't the plan. It's just what happened. Um, so I was actually trying to go to Wilmington where my girlfriend at the time was actually going, um, because I heard they had a wakeboard club. So I was like, yo, let's do this. And my other, um, place that I was considering was app which is where i actually ended up going appalachian okay. state um it's in the mountains here of if you want to call them that I'm like hills mountaineers of, of go north carolina go nears yes yeah. sir um so um but yeah so the wilmington thing didn't work app thing worked so i go up there and check it out and i'm like oh yeah this is sick um you know the town is really cool it's kind of like a hippie vibe there's it's a big music scene and the snowboard hill is like right down the road so not only could you take the class, uh, or so you could take snowboarding as a PE. So I was like, that's awesome. Um, so I did that my first year. And then every year after that, I taught it. Okay. So it was a sick gig. Um, I wasn't done with wakeboarding. However, it was like, there's not a whole lot going down in the mountains. You know what I mean? So my first winter in Boone Um, I was staying in the dorms, so I didn't really have a place to stay as soon as school was out. So I was like, "Eh, let's go to like Florida and wakeboard because it had already been however long a year since I'd rode. Um, so yeah, I do that. And that was, um, whatever year, the first highest gas prices had ever been. That was when I went to Florida. And so it was literally like, and I wasn't. I'd never ridden cable at this point. Like I'm riding boat and I was trying to get boat sets and people were not trying to let you ride behind their boat. It's like, Hey, can I get a, you know, boat pool, please? It's like, yeah, you got like 30 bucks and I'll give you like 10 minutes. So it was like, wow, this is a, not the best time to come. Not the best experience. (laughs) Like, I mean, what does that look like? You're going down to Florida and like, who are you hitting up to try and get a boat set? Do you have homies that are down there? Yeah, so Alex was already down there. Okay. And then he, his buddy Gibb was like an insane wake skater. And maybe uh, another person or two. It was kind of like people in and out. Uh, it was a Florida house that people were living. So I already knew people that were down there and had a place to stay. And and they were getting boat sets or grinding cable or whatever. It wasn't until when I went down there that the gas went crazy. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, at that point it was like I just – Spent most of the summer down there trying to get very rare pulls. So you did spend the summer down there, though? Yeah. Okay. Or at least some of it. Did you start riding cable then? No, not really. Um, I'm sure, like, I went to McCormick's and I went to O-Dub and rode, but it was, I was more trying to ride boat. Yeah, that's what you were trying to do when you were down there. So, like, you couldn't ride boat, you are probably going to take a cable set. But Yeah, but I didn't get a whole lot under my belt, like, Like I said, I rode, but I definitely didn't know how to ride cable. And that was kind of what, like a lot of boat people run into today, I'm sure. Um, it's frustrating when you're like, oh, I'm good at riding, riding boat. Like, I've got board control. Like, yeah. then you go to the cable and get smacked in the turn. It's like, well, I'm hey, going back to the boat. <laughs> I can hit the water ramp, but the plastic yeah. ramp doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, there's a little bit of that. But um, that's just where I was at at that time. I was like, I wanted to ride the boat. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah. Okay. So you moved, I mean, you didn't move to Florida, but you spent a summer in Florida and then that's like in the middle of your college career kind of, or no, that was the first year. First year. Okay. First uh, winter. So I go back after that and that's when I, you know, I don't know hell when, when I wakeboarded again after that, I was in, I I was in Boone for five years. Um, and I didn't know what the hell I wanted to do 
I just knew that it was like, well, you need to go to college. So I was like, okay, um, business degree, like my old man, <laughs> idiot, <laughs> uh, he does nothing for you. So I was like, all right, let's do like a concentration in entrepreneurship. And I, um, started writing plans and stuff for making a cable park. Now at this time, I really think I was just doing this just because it would be something I was interested in that I, cause I knew I'm going to project. I'm going to have to spend a lot of time on. I had no real expectation of actually starting a cable park. Okay. None. It was just to create something for the class. Or yes. For the program or whatever. Exactly. So, um, yeah, I'm doing all that. Um, you know, they, they built a skate park the first year I moved up to Boone, I'm getting some snowboarding in. I'm still filming and doing, like, every year we was, like, I'd film with all the homies all year. It's just, it turned from wakeboarding to skateboarding and snowboarding. So, but I would still do the same shit. Like, we would film all year, and then we'd have all the homies over to our house, and I'd have, like, a premiere party of, like, a 30-minute video that I made up from, like, the whole year that we filmed. Yeah. And we'd do that shit, like, all every year. Um, so, it was that kind of deal. Um, but... You know, yeah, the wakeboarding was pretty much gone. Um, and then I'm I'm doing these, um, like I said, these entrepreneur classes where I'm writing a wakeboard uh, plan. And as I get into my last year, it's like you have to write a legit business plan. So I wrote like a full on, um, you know, like 40 page business plan. And um that's like ironically what we ended up kind of using for a jib. Okay. So let's see. To go from there, I think we need to transfer over to Alex. Okay. So Alex, like I said, Alex Hamrick, um, who I started jib with, got a lot of story kind of sharing with him. Um, but so he's come up and snowboarded with me a couple of times on them Boone. You know, like I said, we kind of grew up riding together towards the end of my blues career, we were tight. We were yeah. shredding a lot. Like, he was good. I was like, let's ride, you know. Um, we were homies. And so, um, he hits me up towards the end. Uh, let's see, it's 2010, and I'm graduating in December. And uh, he's, so I'm, you know, like everyone that goes to Boone, you're like, oh, I just want to stay here. And, uh, but there's not a whole lot of jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like a big college party kind of town area yeah it was so awesome dude i mean i was in a band out there i worked in a restaurant with um you know it was run by college kids including my now wife like had a great time out there um but uh so you know ultimately i end up doing this this um business plan but let me also say i did a business plan which i get up in front of the class and talk about and i have a slideshow blah 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 not one person not only knew what wakeboarding was no one knew what wakeboarding was <laughs> much less what a cable park was so you're talking people scratching their heads while i'm up here this guy's crazy what does he do it was pretty crazy um it was pretty funny but yeah so so now i'm graduated and i'm just Working in Boone, don't know what the fuck I'm do gonna do. And Alex hits me up like with this fucking proposal that he's real serious about. Actually, hold on, let me back step. So before we go to the proposal, then we we bring in Andy, and so Andy's the other guy that we that helped us create Jib. So Alex and I, um, let's see. So Alex met uh, Andy on Heiko. Okay, I was going to say, who, who you know, who's Andy? So Andy um, was just a, a, a guy on Heiko who was, like, the man. Um, parties at his house. Everybody knows him. Uh, good guy, good times, um, just that kind of guy. And so I think Alex ran into him just via, like, wakeboarding and partying and just lake life shit. Yeah. And so we en he, he ends up, I'm pretty sure, um, I'm going to have to touch base with him on some of this, but I'm pretty sure, like, he ends up at his – at Andy's place on the lake, on Heiko Lake, some time, some party or something, and just sees his backyard layout, which is ultimately a long down slope until you finally get to the water's edge. And he was like, yo, we can build, like, a down rail on here. And, uh, like, this dude's 
he, like he's down he would probably let us do it and i was yeah. like yeah that, like let's do it and he's like all right he's down like we're doing it next weekend or something <laughs> it was really fucking crazy uh we built like this fucking 50 60 foot long down rail in andy's yard we built a pool we put canoes up to start off of and andy pulled us to hit it behind his ski boat with like a 200 foot rope all fucking day and then when we're done it's freezing too we tear the whole shit down and we built it wrote it and tore it down in a day and then we're like having pizzas and beer at andy's kitchen it's just like that was a hell of a day day. like what the fuck um we also used Andy's GoPro to film that, which was the first time I had ever seen a GoPro. I was gonna say that's gotta be like GoPro Gen One or Gen Two, like that was very early epic. On. As soon as we did that and we pulled up, like we plugged the GoPro into Andy's TV, I was like, "I'm getting a GoPro. These things are fucking sick." Um, but yeah, so we did that. That was awesome. I go back to Boone. Another thing worth mentioning, I guess, when I was in Boone. I started doing, um, like I said, we were filming and shit all the time. I started Jibtopia Blogspot. Okay, cool. I have that In down, Boone, so. which was a direct copy of Shredtown Blogspot, like straight up. Um, so thank God for Shredtown. They come in at a time when I'm years from wakeboarding. Um, however, I still have always kind of felt, like I said, like this is probably what I'm you know, I'm snowboarding and skateboarding. I'm not even close as good though. Yeah. It's fun, but it's more fun to wakeboard cause I'm better at it. And, uh, anyway, um, so I'm talking in circles. No, 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 you're good. Uh, so we're talking shred town. So yeah, you're kind of coming back into wakeboarding now. Yeah, exactly. So shred town, Alliance wake, all that's starting to pop. And, uh, and it was like just so exciting and like made me want to do that. Um, but not only that, it was like just everything those guys were doing, filming, documenting. Like I was, like I said, I was already all about it. I was already doing it anyway. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I might as well just have one place to put all this shit. Like just like shred town. So yeah, like a YouTube channel wasn't a thing back then or anything like exactly. that. Exactly. Right? And fuck YouTube. I was on Vimeo because that's what shred town did. True. So that, I mean, I just transferred all of my shit to YouTube somewhere recently, actually. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, um, so you got, that was going on. Um, so you got the blog and your idea was like to kind of mimic what Shredtown was doing. Well, it wasn't really, um, I just like, they just sparked me up. I wasn't like trying to copy them or anything. Like I said, we were already, well, I definitely copied it, you know, the (laughs) the Jibtopia and writing it up. Um, I literally told my, um, one of my roommates that I was living with, like, oh, man, like, there's this shred town. Like, he doesn't know anything about wakeboarding. Like, it's so cool. Like, I need something that's like that, like some kind of name like that. And he's like, how about Jibtopia? And I was like, boop. Like, we good. I'm going to use that, and uh, we're going to run this up. And so, but it was more just like, I'm a big documenter. Um, And so, I just thought that was really cool to have all your shit in one place. Plus, yeah. you could tell people, like, yeah, just check this out. This is all of our shit. And so, it was kind of like that. Yeah. Um, so, what were you posting on there? Like, was it mainly just all the videos you were posting or kind of recording? Or was there It's literally, like, writing jackass too, style board sport shit. Okay. I mean, it was basically skateboarding, snowboarding, you know, shitty wakeboarding, probably. I don't know. Um, whatever the fuck, you know, friends were doing at the time, basically. And did that... I mean, gain like any traction, you know, in wakeboarding where they're, I think you know, wake world posted one of our videos or something. And we were like, Oh shit. Um, and that, um, led to several hundred views. Um, I'm literally sure, hundreds I, of views. I'm sure. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, no, that was it. Nobody, you know, nobody really, nobody really cared. Okay. But so that I, also didn't mean didn't any, any, to anything to me. Yeah. You were yeah. just trying to have a place like a centralized place where you could put all the, the yeah. you know, the footage you're getting. Okay, so I do kind of want to, like, go back to you and Alex and the business plan, and it was Andy, right, who was, like, yeah, the so, party there? Yeah, so um, that was, you know, like I said, we did that big rail thing, and I think that just kind of sparked the ball roll, uh, rolling somehow. I mean, I'm not really sure. Alex just got it in his head, like, let's fucking make a wake park, and this Andy guy 
you know, he's pretty, you know, he's got a solid construction business. Like he might could help us do it. Like he was totally down to like, yeah, let's just fuck off and build this rail in my yard. You know, he might be down to like back up, you know, be the backing man for a, yeah, for some, for an idea like that. So I guess he just, I can't remember what came first. I don't know if he, if he talked to me about the idea or Andy. Um, but ultimately I was like, yeah, that's, you know, I don't know if I was really thinking like this would go anywhere, but I was like, yeah, it sounds awesome. Like, let's do it. And like I said, I'm not really sure of the time, but at some point Alex comes back to me and is like, yo, it's on. Like, are you in? Cause he's down to do it. And it was like, fuck. All right. Like, uh, well, let me think about this because <laughs> even though it was like, yeah, this would be sick. I mean, I kind of, you know, I know what we're going to be getting into. It's not like it's going to be easy. Yeah. And it's also, I've got a good thing going yeah. here at Boone. I've got like my band is fucking awesome. I've got my lady here. Um, and I really like it here. Um, uh, but you know, kind of the way I was looking at it is I, I literally just graduated college. I'm at the perfect age to like try something even give it a couple years. If it doesn't work out, who gives a shit? I can move on and do something else. No big deal. Yeah. So that was kind of a big motivating factor too. And um, so once it was game on, Alex came up to Boone and we went into the library for like four or five days just nonstop and taking my pre-existing Wake Park business plan and just modifying it to being like exactly what we were thinking. And, uh, and of course, like I said, I took it seriously. So when we handed this fucking 40 page dealio over to Andy, I think he was like, Whoa, um, these kids are for real. Yeah. And so from then on, he was like, yeah, let's do this. Like, um, you know, I believe in you guys. Okay. What does that, like that business plan look like? Like, what do you, I you wish to God we still had it, but I mean, it was basically like if you go to entrepreneurship book and open up like how to write a business plan, I like followed that and had all the check, the boxes checked with wakeboarding. It's like, I, you know, here's all the other cable parks. Here's the prices. Here's, you know, breakdown of expected, you know, how much is going to cost. Here's expected how much you make in the first season. Here's. I mean, fucking, I had graphs and charts and, like, all kinds. It was real deal, dude. I wish I still had it. It'd be awesome to look through. Yeah. Um, I'm sure, but, yeah, who knows. Legit business plan, though, and that was just, like, kind of for a general wake park, and then you said that um, you and Alex kind of tweaked it to make it what what Jib was going to be. Yes. Um, But even that didn't end up what we actually did. So, I mean, ultimately, I think we were, initially, we were like, we're going to have, like, a boat. Boat lake, um, you can drive the boat on. We'll have a full cable. Excuse me, none of that shit ever happened. Um, we ended up having all system parks, and that's just, it's not the way to go. I mean, Canada's killing it with the 2.0 parks, but like business wise, I'm not sure how that really works. You don't have much throughput. Stuff. Yeah, it, it's difficult. And, you know, living. Live and learn. Um, But basically what Jib ended up being was uh, three system two um, straight line cables. So the idea was like a beginner, intermediate, advanced. Okay. I mean, it's a good way to approach it. So before you guys even open, you know, how long, well, how'd you find the spot in the first place to to build it? It was just some land that Andy owned. Okay. So it was literally just woods. And so I'm talking like, you know, Alex and I are out there walking in the woods with a phone, like GPSing and outlining what will at one point in the future be a lake. Yeah. I'm talking starting from scratch. And uh, so that's kind of how it all started. But yeah. So anyway, I get the call and um, and we're all taking it seriously. And so I, you know, tell the band, I kind of have to take this uh, random opportunity. And then I tell Casey, my now wife, like, all right, we've been together for like a month. Like, I hope you don't break up with me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and fucking moved to Samora, the absolute middle of fucking nowhere. It's farm town. They grow tobacco. That's it. There's nothing, nothing going on there. It's close to Heiko Lake. 
And other than that, it's nothing. Um, and I packed all my shit up and the, uh, probably like just over a thousand, maybe, maybe 2000 or something that I had saved in the like couple of months before it was like, I'm leaving in a, in a couple of months and like doing this for real. Yeah. So yeah, my little bit of money and my book bag full of clothes and my fucking blazer rolled down to Samora and bam, we're there for the next however fucking long. And it was crazy. I mean, it's first thing was first. We, Alex and I thought we were going to get an RV and just live in a camper. And, um, but Andy had a couple of rental houses in the back of that property that we we're going to start working on. And so we cleaned one of those out and started staying in that. And, uh, it's just a farmhouse. Like, I mean, you're talking, this was some bear living during the jib days. Um, <laughs> Uh, I learned how to, how to live roughly, I you guess we'll say. For sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was kind of, that was kind of the start of uh jib and moving out there and, and all that good stuff. Okay. So you get the, the property is Andy paying you, you know, now that you moved down there, are you like kind of working for him making a wage or is he just hmm. like supporting you? No. Yeah. Nothing. He's not, not paying us. And, um. Well, I mean, the, the facts is you don't get paid to start your own business. Yeah. That's just the way the world goes. And uh, so, you know, the idea is we would start getting some of the money that we make once we open and start paying him off until it's paid off and then we're all partners. Yeah. So that's the grand scheme. That was the plan from the start. Yes. Okay. So it's literally like me and Alex and Andy were three-way partners. Okay. And he and he was the one at the beginning kind of making the financial investment. Yes. So let's get into to building the park. So you said it's just woods. Yeah. So, so well the next step was once we marked it out, um we had a uh well our our for first summer um Alex and I spent the whole summer knocking trees down with a loader in an effort to not have a bunch of stumps when they finally come and log all the woods. So ultimately, Andy logged all the land, and that really helped finance a lot of the park as well. Okay. So that was kind of what happened there. But like I said, the first year, we were knocking all the trees down where what will be inside the lake. And then as soon as, you know, as soon as the logging company came, they took all the trees that we had knocked down and had in a big stack, and it was just like took them out. And they just chopped everything else, stumped it. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of what happened. But – yeah, I mean, even the first season, just knocking trees down, it was, I mean, it was ridiculous. You, you know, it's like, oh, we're building a wake park. This is awesome. It's like, well, actually, we're out in the woods knocking trees down every day. Like, when the fuck are we going to be able to put a wakeboard on? Like, yeah. I got no idea. Like, and this is hard work every day, all day. It's like. And it's not like you're making, like, an hourly wage. Not making like, money. Right. Like, and the light at the end of the tunnel for, like, oh, yeah, like, it's going to be an awesome, like, wake park one day. That looks like it's really far away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you were not even, we don't even have water yet. You, you know, it's <laughs> like, holy, so we're we're in it here, boys. Um, but, yeah, I mean, hell, a lot of a crazy shit, even, even just that summer. Um, I was talking with Casey um, before in an effort to try and remember some of the stuff, and we were just laughing about how, you could probably just write a book about all the shit that happened and, and stuff that we won't remember. But, um, but yeah, just, just while we were knocking down trees, some things that were m worth mentioning, I remember, um, uh, a tree fell and bumped the loader on one time and, and bounced Alex up in the air and busted his head open like stitches style on the top. So he was hard hat hammy after that for a while. That was pretty funny. Um, another one, we knocked one tree over and like the root systems bust open. And I mean, I'm talking, it's so big, like just even half of the roots will be like roof tall. And it's, Holy shit. it's fucking, it's pretty crazy. Like it brings the whole earth up. Yeah. And you knock one of these big boys down. And I remember one time we knocked one down and there was just like a, a hornet's nest or something in the ground. And as soon as the root system, it just ripped that fucking nest open. And we saw a cloud of hornets come out. It looked like a cartoon, like straight up, like you couldn't see through it. 
we literally, it was just like, I heard, I'm I pretty sure I heard Alex say, run! He didn't even turn the loader off. We were just, we are out of there, dude. Bolted out of there. And, and just lots of shit like that. I mean, it's, you know, um, yeah, good times. Um, so, I'm fascinated how you knock a tree over. You, you have a front-end loader and you're pushing yeah. the tree over? Yeah, so you start as high as you can, you yeah. know, try and get some. And some of them wouldn't go, but, you know, we are doing the best we could. And uh, we'd get out there with chainsaws and get the small stuff and, and then try to get the big stuff with the loaders. And then we had this huge strap. So, basically, you know, Alex would knock it down with a loader, um, you know, push it from this side, push it from that side until we got it to go. Then we'd strap a big strap to it and drag it to a stack, and we were just running that. Every um, day? Yeah. I'd, day. I'd strap it up. We're good to go. I'd hop on the tree and surf it over to the pile, and we'd go to another one. And uh, it was just running it. That was another thing um, that happened during that summer. Um, you wouldn't think, you know, it'd be a whole lot going on when you're just knocking trees down, but there was some some stories for sure. I remember we got back from uh, for a lunch break one time and uh after working the chainsaws and i'm like oh shit alex your uh, jeans are ripped and not only that but it like had actually even nicked him i think like there was maybe the smallest minute amount of blood but like it had actually touched him jeez and ripped through his jeans and we just laughed about it and moved on <laughs> i mean so yeah it was that kind of stuff um just nonstop. Pretty much. Yeah. So that's like a whole year of clearing trees. Whole clearing year of clearing land. trees. Yeah. And um, we had a handful of folks come in and, and help us kind of after that. Um, let's see. Yeah. Pull up pull up some notes there to reference. So we're, we're running about a year of clearing so, trees. Yeah. So I've got ultimately, you know, we got my buddy Sager, who I told you about. Um, yep. who moved beside me when I was young. He ended up coming out there. Then we got another buddy of Alex's, Clay. Um, he helped us a lot and lived with us. Clay and Sager and then Drew um, was just a, just a guy who had nothing to do and loved wakeboarding and drinking beer, so he came out and helped us. And uh, Paxton, another uh, high school buddy of mine, and then Morgan and Casey, my wife. And, I mean, that – you know, you're t you say five or six people and like mainly me and Alex doing everything, but a lot of help from, you know, a lot of those folks. And, and that's about it. You know, we had five or six, like I said, folks helping us. And, uh, but most of the time it was, it was Alex and I, I and, too. um, but let's see. So I guess some of the more exciting things after that, like they cleared the woods. That was pretty cool. And then, um, then we, they dug it out and we, and we make the dam and then, um, then it's starting to get exciting. I was going to say, so that's kind of when the light at the end of the tunnel gets a little bit closer, a little bit brighter, yeah, right yeah, yeah. a little brighter. Yeah. So, um, uh, we're doing rain dances. Um, I remember Casey sends me a, a rain stick from Boone. Um, and you know, all the while I'm, uh, Long distance relation relationing with uh, that's not a word with Casey. Yeah, I, I, I'm in. I in am Boone, curious. Like, with the plan being for her to move down at some point. Okay, so that kind of was the plan. Um, and she's down for that. Yeah, for some reason. Um, yeah, I got lucky on that one. Um, like I said, I really didn't know if she was going to even stay with me. Yeah, but then not only that, she uh, she moved down there and uh, and uh, roughed it with us. So. But we'll get there. Um, so, so it's cleared. Got all the trees out. You're doing rain dances, and so, you're in yeah. the process of digging. So bit, right? water uh, didn't take that long to come up, um, and we start building rails and shit. Um, and that was a real process. I myself don't have any construction um, knowledge. Um, my dad likes to say that he often uh, he he passed down what his dad passed down to me, which is nothing. And, uh, if I'm lucky, <laughs> I can uh, do the same to my son. But, um, so, you know, and Alex, uh, had some, some construction knowledge, um, s at least more than I did. And, lefty, uh, and lefty so, lefty ready, tidy. Exactly. Yeah. So he had that under his belt, at least, um, a couple of tools, you know, 
you know, I show up to Jib with, you know, like I said, a book bag of clothes. I don't even have work boots. I mean, it was, it was pathetic. Um, so needless to say, I learned a lot out there. Um, but we were kind of both learning a lot about building as we first started. Our, our first rail that we tried to build, we tried to float with um, the 50-gallon drums. And pff, if I had pictures of this rail, we'd all have a good laugh at it right now. But we were like, yeah, this is our first rail. Like, this is this is going to be in the park. We ultimately ended up not even using it. Like, we, like, burned it or something because it was just a death trap. But we're trying to convince ourselves, like, yeah, like, this will work. Yeah. We, we found out the hard way that you can't cut corners on anything. So, um, but our rails slowly, uh, started getting better and better. Um, Alex's old man, um, knows a good bit about, um, construction and stuff. So he gave us a lot of, uh, advice on like building the floors and, uh, and you know, Andy as well. He knows, like I said, he's, he's got a construction company and shit. And so we had some folks telling us the right things to do, but, um, it was a long process. Um, let's see. Yeah. Building rails, floating. So ultimately what we ended up doing with our floating rails is uh, kind of interesting. So we did the uh, 50 gallon barrels and that, I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's not easy. Like they don't want to float right and they don't want to sit right. Um, it's just a full on pain in the ass. Um, so, we ended up doing, um, one of the things Alex's dad does is spray foam insulation. And so we ended up taking frames out there to where his dad's work was and getting them to spray it with the foam insulation. And that actually worked like a charm. So you take rails, you build the rails out of wood. So we would build like essentially like a little dock. Yeah. And then build off of that. Gotcha. And um, we did that for a lot of our floating rails. And then, um, for some of our in-ground rails, we did this, like, jet thing, which I think Alex had actually talked to someone and gotten this idea from, like, hey, try this this jet thing. It's worked for us. I don't remember who or where that came from, but we ended up trying that, um, where we got the pump, and we keep downsizing pipes to where it's got some pressure, and we were standing up on, like, a dock and just got this high-pressured pipe that we're, like, going down with until it just keep, keeps going down and down and you've got a hole to drop a post in. Um, and that actually worked really well too. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean the amount of things we trial and aired and learned throughout that building process and all, all the, all that shit was countless. So this is before there's even any, you know, two towers up. You're just, yes, we got no, like, yeah, we're not riding. There's nothing. And then, um, so once we've got the rails like mainly built, um, we kind of had like a paint party and I had like one of my buddies is in my band who painted that wakeboard um, and a bunch of his crew came down and then like Morgan and a bunch of, um, of our other friends came down um, and we had like a paint party. We painted the bus and we painted all the rails and all this shit and that was awesome. That was a good time. Uh, but again, like we didn't even have cables yet. We don't yeah. have anything. Um as far as when we we're actually getting the rails or getting the cables and stuff, that's the kind of the next chapter. Um, so that's when we actually got a call from Pat Panacos that was like, Hey, um, so we, we sent him pictures of our setup. And that was another thing. Like my idea was like, okay, social media is real big. Um, no one can hold their load. Everyone just posts everything immediately. And I'm all about, like hold it unless you know it makes a bigger impact or at least that's the way I felt and I still do um so we were kind of big on like not doing what everyone does today which is show you everything they're doing constantly so you know we're in the woods building jib for two years and as far as any of my friends or family knew we dropped off the face of the earth basically yeah. no one saw us or heard from us for two years and like I said that was kind of part of the plan like I wanted the first time you saw the park for you to say, whoa, you know what I mean? Um, and so that was kind of the idea. So we, we, we had the, um, our pool gap set up and just to kind of set the time here. So, you know, we've got CWC has a gigantic fucking concrete block pool gap. This crazy as hell. 
But I think that's it. Like I was, I was, I was going to ask. So. No one else has pool gaps. Yeah. And, um, and we, we just kind of believed that, like, that's where it should go and that if we just make that happen, like, it's going to work. Like, the, the wake park, I mean. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, we've got that, like, pretty much set up. It's not painted. And, like I said, we haven't showed anyone. So we send some pictures to Pat. Um, and next thing you know, he's emailing us, like, yo, uh, Nico and the boys want to come down and do some filming. Um, they're making a movie. And it was like, what? Hell yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of the next um, chapter. And so what I'm referring to, if you don't know, is the debut. Um, so we got we got Andy Kolb. Um, we got Felix. We got Nico. And uh, ultimately, Henshaw ended up coming down. And that was the crew that did... Um, a little bit of the debut at Jib. Okay, but before the debut, you guys installed. I mean, I'm I'm guessing with Pat the two tower, the first two tower at least. No, so that that's all kind of the same story. Um, okay, more like of the legendary um, ness for Nico and Felix, um, because they came down with the cables. Actually, maybe even before the cables. No shit, and helped us put everything together. And of course, really? Nico probably like knows how to do all of it anyway. Like uh, quick work of it. So they were fucking legends. I mean, they're here to ride and there's no riding. They're, they're helping us make the fucking cables, put everything up. Meanwhile, you know, they've been riding cable forever. So they're showing us how to drive, showing us how, how everything works. And, um, you know, I had I had not n- heard of Felix at the time, but um, you know, Nico was in Alliance, um, all the magazines and shit, and so that was really sick. Um, and then Henshaw, you know, was a big hero of mine at the time as well, and so we were all about it. Um, so they come down and and uh they helped us finish painting and all kinds of stuff. It was really sick. We had a good time um just like hanging with them before everything was up and it was awesome. Um so that was a great experience. And then um then they start riding and then I mean I think they were out there for like a week or something. This is probably April like I was going to say this is like springtime, right? Yeah, like, like cool we're stuff. basically in the final rush to try and get everything ready so that we can open for the summer. And this is I guess two years after I moved down there. Okay. So we're finally like got a wake park. Yeah. Um, but like I said, they're, they're riding and filming for that whole week. And Alex and I are still building and painting and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it still wasn't even finished. I mean, you watch the debut, some of the rails aren't even finished painting and shit like that. So, um, so we're still working. And meanwhile, I'm watching them, all ride and do all the tricks that I dreamed of doing for the past two years. Like first tee, (laughs) first tee. Yeah. It was like, it was awesome. But at the same time, it was like, this is my nightmare. (laughs) (laughs) And then not only that, you know, like I said, I, I, I'm like, okay, like I'm not an awesome wakeboarder, but I like to think it's kind of what I'm good at. And so I've got that kind of thought process. Like, Oh man, these dudes are killing it. Like, what, I'm going to get out there and rip with them. I've never rode cable. Well, and you haven't strapped in a board in how long? That too. Two years or yeah. something? Well, hell, I haven't, I haven't even skateboarded or anything for those two years. Just chopping wood in the forest. Fucking chopping wood, dude. So, I mean, you got nothing. And so I'm taking off first go, and it's, it's Nico or Felix or somebody, some legend. And I'm like, you know, let me just try to hold my own here. <laughs> Face slap in the turn because I can't do a turnaround. So ultimate like devastation here <laughs> and uh, that whole, so I was just kind of like, ah, oh, man, it's, I'm just going to enjoy watching them ride. Yeah. Let, let <laughs> but, get um, out of town and I can go rip. <laughs> but it was really cool. Um, uh, Cortez out there snapping, you know, photos for uh, Alliance and stuff. And it was just hype just having them out there and watching people rip. And like, first of all, it's just, there's a cable. People are riding. That in and of yeah. itself is like, this is exciting, dude. We're doing it. 
Um, so that was really cool. So is it still undercover though? Like the only people that are really knowing what's going on yeah. is the people who are there. Yep, exactly. I think yeah. even while they were doing the debut, like no one even knew the park was there or even yeah. existed really. Okay. Um, and so, um, so they're, I don't know what I was they're talking They're there for a week and then they finish up filming. Yeah. They're filming for about a week. Yeah. And so then whenever they're gone, we like, I guess we're open um eventually ultimately what's um, opening day look like so that looks like casey's sitting in a camper um rv um and you would come up and sign our little waiver and pay her and and get going and it was pretty bare bones like it was i mean the the, the park looked really cool and the paint jobs and everything but it wasn't necessarily necessarily like a like a place that a mom would drop little Johnny off all day and feel fine about it. It was kind of like, who's running this place? What yeah. is going on here? <laughs> um, but the next winter, we we put a, a bar and grill in, and it had a more legit vibe then. I think it really had a nice mix of, like, a core vibe, but, like, little Johnny can come. Yeah. So um, it was pretty solid. Uh, I think that was that was the peak there for sure, but – yeah, that's opening day. We're trying to, like, we don't know what the hell we're doing. I mean, we're, was it, like, kind of, like, decently busy? People were showing up. Like, word was spreading now a little bit. People came out. Um, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it wasn't, like, first day, like, holy shit, we're overrun with folks. Yeah. I mean, even at Elevated, we're still trying to get the word out. Like, people come from, I'm from Lexington. I didn't know this was here. What's so, wakeboarding? What is cable? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of that. So, yeah, it wasn't like we were slammed. But, um, yeah, we had folks out there, and uh, it was sick. We were trying to learn how to operate a business, and yeah. we learned a lot, and uh, it was awesome. Um, let's see. So I've got some backpedaling to do, though. So as we're approaching um, opening, we're like, all right, we need some help. So we start trying to get um, folks to help. And so – uh, my buddy Jared that was in my band um, who painted that, um, he um, was also in the process of, like, kind of trying to do his own farm thing. And uh, so he w already had, like, it was something like Couch Surfer or something like that, like a website or something, where people would come and work, like, on your property in exchange for, like, just a place to stay. And so I used that concept and was like, yeah, we could probably get people to just to do that, just to help us just get more places to, to stay. Kind of program. Not even that. Like, you know, I'm telling you, there's, you know, people do this in farms work, and stuff. Just work and stay. Yeah. Just, uh, I, mean, like, I wouldn't do it, but it's a thing. I don't know. <laughs> and um, so we tried to do that. And then ultimately it was like, you know, yeah, let's just, you know, let's get people that want to come here. Yeah. Um, because look how, you know, look at this place. So, um. Yeah, we put it out there. Um, well, first we put – Alex and I spent, like, two days filming on the – and we couldn't really ride because – Hadn't really ridden Hadn't really much. ridden much. <laughs> so it's it's a pretty ugly video, but it showcased all of our rails and shit. And we put that out there um, where it showed everything and no one had seen anything yet. So it was kind of like, oh, shit, like, what the hell is this place? Yeah. Um, and so um, – you got to stay on me here. I'm, no, no, you're good. So, uh, I mean, you guys are, you released that first video, like, was that on YouTube, Vimeo, or what, you know? Oh, yeah. Facebook so, account. anyway, that was, um, I think we got that on Alliance or something. Okay. I remember, like, having our first video on Alliance was, like, huge. Yeah. Uh, to me, at least. Like, that. this is back in the day when, like, you're checking Alliance. Every day. Every day. Like, Refresh. what's new is posted. Because... Yeah. That was everything. Instagram isn't big. Nothing's yeah. big. It's you're going to the media house. Yeah, so if you were, it, I mean, at that time, getting your video on the website was almost like the new version of being in the mag. Yeah. Like, it was a big deal, or at least that's the way I kind of looked at it. Um, So that was really sick. And so then people knew about it, and so we were okay to put the word out, like, we're going to open. We need help. Yeah. And so... um. So let me get this straight. Um, yeah. So, you, so then we've got, I'm, I'm like interviewing people and, uh, for jobs, 
for people to come or out and help ride us. positions. And we've got yeah. people from, it's like, we were surprised, like, all around the world. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's probably how good the park was, though, at the time. Well, and that's what was crazy, too. Like, the whole time we were there, and I say this a lot, like, you know, I was only there for two seasons that we were open. But the amount of shit that happened seemingly in those two years was like you could write a fucking book. Yeah. Like, there's pros and teams and, and shit rolling in and out nonstop. There's a fucking bar there. You know, there's a campfire after that. And it just never stopped, basically. So, I mean, it was like 24-7 wake world for the two years. So, consequently, there was so much shit that happened. It seemed like a lifetime. Yeah. Um, but... So Ultimately, so the the first people we got that came down, I, I did write down um, because I was talking with Case, and there was a lot of shit we were struggling to remember. But we got uh, Franco and G came from Argentina. We got Jules and FX, French Canadians. We had Danny from Spain, um, Judith from Germany, and then we had Nils from Holland, the winching legendary Dutchman. Um, then we had Niles and Evan from the States. Um, so just two people from the States. So all these people are interviewing like with you? For yeah, well, I talked to a bunch of people, and I was like, you know, these these cats are chill. Yeah, Let's have them out. Um, they seem like they got the right vibe. And so those were the legends that helped us through the first season. So they uh, came out and, like, did a work-to-ride program? Like, yeah, exactly. So we had some campers. Um, we had the – we had um, – you know, the the idea, I think, was, like, everyone do, like, a couple hours of work a day and, um, you know, hit the weed eater and, you know, standard shit. So, yeah. And it worked. Um, everybody had fun. It was a fucking blast. Um, and then the following season, um, you know, a couple of those people returned. And, but then we had uh, some, like, we had Wes come. We had uh, Jacobson. We had... Uh, Ollie Brumlin came, um, a couple of new faces and a couple of old faces for the second season. So yeah. kind of the same deal. Um, but it was a game changer we had in the bar and grill because okay. then it was like we had a chill zone. We had s- somewhere where, you know, all the work trade people could just walk in and make lunch or whatever. Um, so that worked great. So who who opened that bar grill? Was that Andy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and we actually didn't build that. That was his construction company. We did. So that was his whole thing was yeah. that, that bar and grill. Yeah. And so that was awesome that we didn't have to build that. And consequently it was actually there the next season. Um, so that was sick. Um, and that worked great. We had, I mean, throughout the, the two years that I was there that we were running and operating, like it was, it was awesome. Um, we had, like the Byerly team came out, um, humanoid team, uh, CWB team, like so many crews and pros and like, like I said, just shit happening all the time. Like it was a hype spot. And like an- another thing is like after the debut, like Garrett was down there snapping picks the whole time for the magazine. So you're talking as soon as the debut was over, it seemed like there was a picture of Jib in the magazine, if not multiple, like every time. Yeah. And uh, we would get just as hyped on a, a picture of somebody at the park as if it was us. We're like, ah, that's our spot. We're in it again. Yeah. Check this out. So that was awesome. So like there was hype around it. At least it seemed like that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so two fucking solid, awesome summers and, um, it was sick. So I guess, I mean, there's a lot, I feel like we could unpack either in the first summer or the second summer, but for the first summer, you said your plan with Andy or the, the plan all three of you guys had was you start making money and your plan is for you guys to pay him back, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the idea. So that first mm-hmm. summer, I'd imagine, you probably don't make too much money. No. And so, I mean, yeah, let me uh, let me set the scene again. So as we're going into the second summer, clearly the uh, couple hundred bucks I had saved is gone. And, uh, you know, we're we're not even drinking Peebers, boys. We're on bush ice or whatever. <laughs> it, it's if that. I mean, we're... And, and that's dinner. Um, that's dinner, bush ice for dinner. I'm talking, I, I started, um, I started working at the local food line and 
That's and a grocery, we, grocery and, store. Yes, okay. which is a grocery store. And I'm pretty sure minimum wage is like twice what it was then. Uh, I'm, I think I was I making seven like bucks. seven bucks yeah. or something. And which gave me enough money, like buy beer and weed. And, and we were on food stamps and that was how we survived. And for the first summer and the second summer? E, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, roughing it. I was serious. Um, and that was kind of what, um, probably started leading me to getting out of it. Well, that and like a, t- a lot of stuff. Um, Anything I want to talk about before yeah. I talk about that. Um, I mean, let's let's talk about like the setup itself. So I do want to talk about the pool, and you said the only other one kind of at the time was CWC. So yes. did you draw inspiration from CWC, and that's why you decided, or was it something you guys had already thought about? Um, I'm sure we probably saw CWC and, and was like, we got to do that. You know, how long until this is everywhere? Yeah. And right now it's literally nowhere it's definitely not in the states it's 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 all only place it's at um so yeah that was the plan um so our first pool um god it was such a fun setup dude um kink rail a real handrail i mean it was felix old. just fucked that handrail up in the debut so fun it, um it. absolutely uh some of the most fun rails I've still to this day I feel like I've ever hit um the kink rail was like so fun like it was aggressive enough and steep enough where feel it, was, it. it was like you could feel it the handrail I mean it's like how many times have you felt what sliding metal and like feels and sounds like on a wakeboard never yeah. um especially I mean and it's like you know you're doing what you've seen in skateboard videos and snowboard videos it's like this just feels fucking right dude yeah um so I mean that was awesome um and then the the second pool was a little bit mellower, like it wasn't as steep. This was the was, intermediate, mm-hmm, okay. but it was kind of uh, longer. So we had like a Corex that was in the middle that was like basically water level. Although you did actually have to ollie on. I mean, it was only a couple inches, but you did have to ollie onto it. Whoo! And people got smoked <laughs> on that thing. Oh man! Because they didn't ollie. It's that rail oh, in and of itself. Well, then you got the wake skate attempts. You talk about sacking a Corex. That's like thirty foot long. Yeah, that ain't fine. That's not ribbed for your pleasure. No, nah. not. <laughs> oh, baby. Uh, but um, and then we had the third one, which was just open water, uh, maybe a dance just to learn how to at some point or something. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. And so that's how we ran it. Um, and, and it works great. I mean, if you got one of those one of those two point docks, um, you know, we had like a pool. And then a dock at the back of the pool. So basically, you would start on the dock, you'd go out of the pool and hit one of the down rails into the lake. Then we had, you know, four rails or whatever, like probably two rails on either side, turn around and come back. And, you know, a standard weekend, you got eight to 10 guys out there, do a down and back, pass the handle, down and back, pass the handle. It's fun as hell. You're feeding off each other. It's a good setup. Yeah. Uh, it worked good. Um, so that's kind of how it, it operated. But also on the first cable, we had the bus. Okay, cool. I was going to ask. So let me break down that. Um, I don't know where I got this idea in my head that I wanted to slide a bus, but I've always been uh, like, and since then I've I've hit like several vehicles. And it's just fun for some reason. (laughs) I don't know why, but I was just immediately attracted to it. And I really don't know where this fucking idea even came from, but we had like doodles of like a stick man on a bus. Like, oh God, that shit was funny. Um, that might have even been in Alliance magazine. But anyway, uh, so that was f- literally in the plans from before we even had a lake. So when we, um, if you watch in the debut, the bus actually sits out away from the, it wasn't just sitting on the bank. Mm-hmm. It, we made a bus pad like we made land that was as big as a bus come out into the lake and then drove the, or the bus didn't run I was gonna say, put it get that unit in there out on there with like a excavator and shit dang okay so um but so anyway as we're building the lake we build a bus pad 
with the idea of putting a bus on it. Yeah. Um, and then at some point, Casey comes down and is like, got your boys a bus. And we we're like, what? <laughs> Fucking $200. And she's got a bus. I told you she's Full a legend. School bus. <laughs> and uh, so we bring that sucker down. And that was really a big part of the, like, the draw to get people to come out and help paint. Because okay. I was like, we've got this hippie bus. We're just going to paint it. Everybody come down. It'll be a party. And so that was kind of part of that as well. And okay. uh, and that was another big part of the debut. Like, um, you know, Henshaw doesn't know this, I'm, I'm sure. But, you know, behind the scenes, Alex and I are talking to ourselves like, are we going to let him hit the bus? Yeah, fucking we put we put that shit together and this is like a here's a you know putting an ender in your lap yeah and obviously we wanted to hit it and before anyone else hit it but ultimately we let henshaw take the cover shot on that guy and uh, it was awesome and uh, just watching him hit it um i mean it was uh, that was an awesome um experience and then ultimately we did get to end up having a session and that was really cool. Um, cause we had like a whole crew of people out there, um, sessioning it. There was, it was probably like seven or eight of us like riding. I feel like, um, at the time, but when we finally did end up hitting the bus, it wasn't even until the like second season, I don't think. Really? Um, yeah, because I know Ollie and Wes were, were in on that session and Graham and, uh, first time you were hitting it. Yeah. And we just fucking went ham on it. And that was cool, too, because Henshaw got to hit it and got, you know, the sweet shit in the debut. But then we got to have a session on it. So yeah, we, were like, really, really tore it up. Fun. And uh, that was sick. Um, so could you live in that bus? Like, what, what was inside the bus? You could live in that bus. Ty Morlang actually did live in that bus. Um, For how long? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Ty is also a Wakesgate legend. Um I don't know where he's at nowadays, um, but he was quite a character. And uh, so if you don't know Ty, him in a nutshell is just like, just like, yep, yep, oh, hey, yep, what are we doing? Oh, hey, oh, you know, like that's his, like he's just bouncing off walls. Like he's smoking tobacco like nonstop and drinking coffee nonstop. He's like literally hitting the bong with like coffee as the water. And carries a pot of coffee around with him, like, every day, everywhere he goes. Like, he's, you know, that's his uh, personality. So, it, he was fun to have around. But um, he was willing to do a lot of shit that most people weren't. And so, that's why he took on living in the bus. Um, and this is one year, and this is, like, as it was getting cold. So, we actually installed a wood stove in the bus. And he's at one point he quit sleeping in the bus and just started sleeping in the shop because he left a light on and fell asleep and it caught his sleeping bag on camp, on fire. <laughs> so that was the end of the bus living. Um, I guess you could say, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was a good time. <laughs> um, but, Ty really put me on to, to wake skating, too. It was like, holy shit, like, people are kickflipping this shit. Like, again, I'd, I'd probably never seen someone kickflip a wake skate, like, in real life. Yeah, because I, I would um, imagine that jib setup probably didn't, you know, lend super heavy to a lot of wake skating just because it was... No, um, and that was another, like, Trey came through, actually, who, um, Trey Seneff does Blackwater, um... And he blew my fucking mind when he came out there. And I was like, who are you? Like, we need to hang out. Like, you're killing it. Because <laughs> he was, like, kick flipping out of, out of the pool and shit. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, whoa, this is insane. Like, let me film you. <laughs> and uh, literally, like, I'm pretty sure, like, I touched base with Trey years later. And he's like, yeah, pretty much, like, right after that, I moved to Florida. And, like, I never saw Trey until I was past Jib again after that. Yeah. Um, but thank God he came back and made Blackwater and that was kind of a salvation spot for me, um, post jib. But, yeah. uh, so, um, yeah. Is there anything, you know, in those two years, both those summers, even the winter that, you know, kind of stick out to you about, about that? Oh, well, another jib. thing was, uh, Medoc, Joey Medoc coming through and I like actually did legit like photo sessions with him. Yeah. Legend. And, uh. 
if you know anything about wakeboarding, um, he was one of like two or three main photographers for all wakeboarding publications, seemingly like back in the day. Like if you were looking through a magazine, like he probably shot a lot of it. Um, just a camera legend. So having him out just in and of itself was awesome. Not to mention like actually shooting with him. Yeah. So that was fucking sick. And at that time he was kind of doing, he was submitting photos and stuff to the mags, but he wasn't like, you know, like I'm your guy, like I'm Alliance's guy or I'm Wakeboard Mags guy or whatever. Um, he was actually doing his own thing, Wake Journal at that point, or um, maybe trying to get that off the ground or something. Um, so anyway, um, did some shoots with Joey and and awesome guy. Um, had a great time like getting to know him and, and hanging with him. And and he got me into Alliance Mag um, a handful of times and on the covers of his magazine also a handful of times, which was all, like, dream come true scenario yeah. stuff for me. So, like, I owe him a lot for that and um very appreciative. And uh, that was just something really cool to come away from it with. That's that second summer, probably. Yeah. That he's coming out. 100%. Of and the second, like, that's another thing. Like, the second summer – is when I started to ride, actually. Yeah. Like, the whole first summer, I still didn't even ride, I don't think. Probably like, too overwhelmed and focused. Exactly. There, like, there's too much run. shit to do. And, like, the last thing you were thinking of is, like, let's have fun. When when you're surrounded in, uh, by the spot that's, like, just fun. Yeah. Ironically, like, we were just working. And um, so we're going into the second year and I'm, I'm telling myself like, I'm not going to do this again. I'm going to ride. And not only that, I'm going to film. Yeah. And so I remember it was my birthday, which is the end of May. And I still hadn't rode this year. And I'm like, you know what? It's my birthday. You can't tell me that I'm not riding. So who wants to hold a camera? I'm about to get out here. And I got like five tricks or something like that day. And I was like, it's on. I'm right. filming. Fire's like I'm I'm riding. No more of this, like not riding. Yeah. Um and so you know, it's 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 easy to it's easy to say because like Casey wishes that often um that she had rode more at Jib, but it's it's easy to just get, you know, you're around it all day and then at the end of the day you're tired and it's like kind of the last thing you want to do. And it's just the way it goes. So, and that's just kind of what happened. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I started riding on the, um, the second season and I started filming and that kind of started what I feel like was the beginning of my taking wakeboarding seriously. Um, I think also I was just looking at my age and was just like, you know, you're only going to get older and you're already pretty far behind because you, you know how to wakeboard, but you don't really know how to ride cable. <laughs> you took five years off in college pretty <laughs> yeah. much, and you don't know work riding. Yeah. So what, it was, age, what age are you now this second summer? Mid-20s? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So, um, okay. um, so, yeah, I'm starting to ride, and I'm starting to film, and that was the first – that was the year I filmed my first, like, video part that I would say, like, was the first thing I ever took serious filming as far as wakeboarding. What was that called? Uh – Winter to summer at Jibtopia. Okay. I think. Um, and then, so basically, I filmed all year. And, you know, Graham would come over and look at the computer and be like, oh, like, a couple more clips since I saw it last time. Like, Medoc would be like, oh, that's sick. You know, and a couple of things that were like, a couple of guys that were like, okay, like, this is pretty sick. And so I started, you know, thinking like, all right, you know, I might have a real video part here or something, and it's not that good, I'm sure. Um, but um, so I filmed all year, and then I took everything from that year and made like a what I would consider like a full part. Yeah. Um, like a song's length. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like could go in a movie type yeah. deal. And so that was my formula. Um, from then on, I was like, I'm gonna film every year and just make one part that could go in a movie like type deal. Yeah. And so I did that like for several years. Um, okay. Before and that's part of the reason, like I was a ghost on social media. 
because I would film hard all year, every year, but I would never post anything. Yeah. Because like I said, I, I thought it was more of an impact when you just saw everything all at once. Like, whoa. I think it is. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And so I, I kind of took that formula and ran for the next years. We went through the jib days, a lot of it, those two summers or two seasons. And then now we're kind of going to jump into, you know, your exit, kind of leaving leaving jib and making your way out. Yeah. What, what really sparked that? All right. Well, um, a lot of shit going on. Um, as you can imagine, like I was saying, like – Heavy party vibes, heavy wake life vibes, but also, you know, a lot of work. And um, like I said, it's it's like it was it's nonstop. Like it was a it was a twenty four seven fucking thing. Um, so, you know, the cheddar bisque was starting to get to me. Um, as in the lack of cheddar yes, bisque. as in the lack of, and then it's just a lot of stuff. Um, so, you know being friends with and working with and living with someone is, is a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, ultimately I kind of decided on my own that it was like, again, I'm, I'm at this age in my life where I don't know why I seemingly judge stuff like this, but I was like, you know, I need to be doing something productive, like monetarily, it's just getting too late in my life to just be sitting here twiddling my thumbs. Yeah. And, you know, I like to believe my gullible young self that we were going to all be partners and blah, blah, blah one day. But, yeah, honestly, I felt like rather rather than, like, saying something and Andy, like, just telling me what I wanted to hear, I was, like, making the decision on my own after kind of seeing years of how we all operate and kind of the writing on the wall, and I just made the decision on my own. Like, it's too late in my life to – basically, I just wasn't willing to give any more of my time for nothing. Yeah, because you're – what, at this this point, like, four or five years in? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, yeah, that's, that's that's a chapter of your life. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like you know what are we doing, and like I said, I, I know that Andy would have probably told me what I wanted to hear if I consulted him could, about it. But I just you know I was just like I know what's going on. So um, it was that, and you know Alex and I were button and not button heads, but like we were kind of like I said we'd been around each other long enough, and we're and uh, just some kind of stuff like that going on. It wasn't as fun. And um, another thing was, like, you know, he was kind of up top, and Case and I were down below and running everything, and then it was, like, a lot of, uh, you know, this... He ended up having this huge uh, rail idea, um, which ended up getting built. But that was a, kind of like a, a final straw on the camel's back for me kind of deal uh, personally um, because... I had had this idea of, of this rail I called the cheese grater um, from before we even opened, which was like a Corex pipe that's like head high that has banks or, or, or tranny on either side, which is almost what we have at Elevated now. Yeah. And, you know, it was met with, that's too expensive, it's going to take up too much room, blah, blah, blah. And like I said, this was back before we even opened. And so I'm like, okay, no problem. And we were, you know, solid team unit the whole way. But at, towards the end, it was like, oh, Alex has this idea for this rail. Like, I wasn't really about it. Um, and he, you know, approached me like, look, I've got these blueprints already drawn up. And I was like, uh, you know, that's a lot of, you know, money and real estate on the park and blah, blah. And just met him with some hesitancy. And he was like, well, I've already drawn up, so we're doing it. And I was just kind of like, uh, you know. I'm starting to feel like maybe um, my opinion isn't as valued or I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff um, was starting to linger in my head. And then, <clears throat> you know, ultimately I've told Casey, like it was like the hardest decision. One of the hardest decisions I've ever made because you're walking away from so much work and like you're, 
everything that you care about. Yeah, and four years of blood, sweat, and tears put into it. Exactly. So you can imagine, like, hard to walk away from. But at the same time, it was, like, almost, like, the only decision um, was kind of the way I was yeah. looking at it. Um, just everything that was going on at that time. And so I made, like, made a big to deal, like, um, the best way to, like, kind of break it to Alex. And, and, and I called Andy and told him, like, yeah, I need to talk to you one day. And just came over and was like, look, you know, I'm out. And he was kind of like, doesn't sound like you're leaving me room to try and convince you to otherwise. And I was like, nah, yeah, just letting you know. And uh, that was kind of how it went. But, you know, you know, a lot of people might might say, oh, you know, you put four or five years into that and you got nothing to show for it. Um, what a waste of time. But I really like to look at the positives and, and, you know, I only look at it as like, as awesome. Like it was a killer learning experience. I've got lifelong friends from around the world. I mean, I'd like to think I made my microscopic um, impact on the wake world even somewhat. And um, just a lot of shit that like I would have never had the opportunity to do. Um, And plus like getting a shot at trying to open my own business and and walking away essentially in failure without being up to my eyes in debt yeah um so i walked away from it like satisfied ultimately i guess um okay so when was that point when you when you went and talked to andy was that after the second summer or was that sometime in the off season um so this was yeah this was as the second season was ending and we're going into winter. I'm actually helping Alex build this rail. And sometime in that winter, we're out of there. Um, and so, how we got out of there. Um, so, at this point, um, Casey is basically working the bar during the day. Checking people in. Watch the safety video. Have fun. Um, and then, a couple days during the week, she would go to Danville which is one of our closest neighboring towns and teach yoga. Um, so she actually got her yoga certification in Boone and like the next week moved to Jib. And so she's teaching yoga and we're deciding that we're going to exit. And we have no plan. We have nowhere to go. It literally got to the point where, like I said, it, uh, it was like, we're, we're leaving. Like, this is hard as fuck, but we're gone. Yeah. And the fact that we have nowhere to go doesn't mean anything. We're gone. Um, and so this fucking crazy opportunity, just the world's aligned. And um, one of the ladies that Casey teaches yoga for asked if we wanted to house it for them for two weeks. And they were going to pay us um, to watch their house. And they have this, like, really nice house in Danville. Yeah. So we were like, wow, um, we actually just threw all our bags in the car. And that'd be great. (laughs) (laughs) So we literally go directly from Jib to their house. And within those two weeks, we found a house in Danville. And we were Danville residents within two weeks of moving from Jib. Really? And... And that's where the next five years chapter of my life was in Danville. So how far Just is Danville? Just down from, the road from Jib. How far is that? Like, I mean, you're talking like 20 minutes. Really? Or maybe a half hour. So are you still going back to Jib at all, or are you kind no. of, you're done? You're out. No. You're not touching it. No. Well, I try to go back, but, um, and, you know, you know, Alex and Andy and I are all, good you know I'm not a burn bridge kind of guy um but I tried to go back and when I left with Alex we were on good terms but I tried to go back and just to ride just to ride or just to go there and chill and he wasn't really having it um which I mean I kind of understand but so my first year away from Jib was pretty depressing so not only am I leaving my dream I've got nowhere to ride um it sucked. Yeah. And uh, I still um, was, like, writing and filming and shit, but it was, like, 
That was pathetic. Where would you be riding if it wasn't a jib? Trip to Valdosta yeah. or something. I mean, you're talking – so the, my – you know, so my last year at jib, I rode a lot. And then the following year, I probably rode, like, basically none again. <laughs> but then, you know, I think that's right around the time Blackwater was starting up. Okay. So that was kind of the next phase of my life, too. And so – Basically, I was in a, a serious need for the cheddar bisque, so I just got a job, luckily, um, and it ended up being, like, a pretty sick gig. I was just taking pictures of cars at different car dealerships and then getting their inventory online for them. So how did that, how'd you, how'd that happen? How'd you get that job? It just was listed in the... And you just applied for it and yeah. got it? Um, mm-hmm. So, um, that was, like, a legit job. Um, so, and I was doing that for, well, I got that job and then, um, Casey decided she wanted to start going to school for dentistry. Um, we're all over the place. Was she going to school at App State? No. Um, So she was just working in Boone. Yep. That's how you guys met. And then she decided she wanted to go to school once you guys moved to. Yes. Yes. So, um. She was doing the yoga and then um, started teaching or uh, started going to school for uh, dental. And I was just working nonstop and just we were living off my paycheck. Yeah. And then I would try to scoot to Blackwater when I could. And then that was basically the deal for a couple of years. A couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so that's when Trey started getting me on the skate. It took a while. Uh, I went to I went to Blackwater for probably a s- couple years just filming on the wakeboard. And then it was like, oh, okay, I got a couple clips. Like, let me hop on the skate just for fun. And then it kept – it probably just, you know, I'm on the skate a little bit more each time type deal. Yeah. <laughs> Until it was like Trey basically just turned me into a wake skater. Yeah, and that's a very wake skate, you know, friendly park. Oh, dude. Obviously. Yep. Okay, so what is Blackwater Junction and and what's kind of yeah? What I'm referring to, Trey Seneff, Wake Skate Legend, um, he created, um, what I tried to do with with Jib. He he created a freaking you know a paradise, um, but specifically for wake skaters, um, pretty unique still to this day. I mean, there's not a lot of parts that's like we've got wake skating in the eye, um. Yeah, so, yeah, incredible. Two drops. Um, first one's probably, like, waist high. Second one's, like, shoulder high. Three foot, five foot, maybe, type deal. And um, it's just, like, perfect for learning. It's, like, perfect for filming. It's just an awesome setup. And, uh, like I said, uh, specifically for wake skating. So, um, lots of good times out there. I, I'm continuing to film and stuff as, as I'm living in the Danville life. Um I got a fucking shitty, you know, gas winch, and we're starting to, you know, again, I'm like, all right, you know, if I want a winch, like, I'm not getting any younger. Like, let's get out there and get it. And it's not a whole lot of, uh, you know, big learning curve there, especially when you don't have a crew. Um, you know, I'm talking most of the, most of uh, my winch days in uh, Danville were, like, literally – one of Casey's yoga students holding a camera or something, or like maybe I can get one of my old skate buddies to come down for the day to help me. Yeah. Who like do- doesn't wakeboard at all. Um, and shit like, and just Casey, like Casey's a real one. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, it, like driving the winch usually. And we're like going to spots, like trying to hit shit. And it's just like me. And we're like, <laughs> all right, well, you know, I'm trying out here. And so, you know, we're talking years of me still like, taking wakeboarding seriously and trying to film and shit because like I said I'm I'm looking at my time dwindle as way up. Um, candles burning down for this way I look at shit for some reason and uh yeah so I was getting it um trying to but it would you know keep in mind this is with a full-time job so it's it's not like we're out there ripping every day yeah um I had some flexibility with this job which was one of the best things about it like, you had a certain amount of work that you were kind of expected to do. 
Um, but if you wanted to just bust your ass and run everywhere you went and get done sooner, you could do that. They don't care. So it wasn't like an <laughs> hourly thing. It was just like, you got to get these. It was hundred percent commission. Cars. I was only commissioned. So I got paid basically per picture. So, so you could zip around. And yeah. I'm like literally when I like, I didn't stop for lunch break. I never ate lunch unless I was driving to the next place. Like, yeah. and I like that kind of shit. Like when I would get to the lot, I would literally like get keys and start running from one car to the next <laughs> <laughs> in an effort to like get off early and try to scoot to Blackwater for an hour or something. But so, I would literally run that. And like uh, what I would try to do is get to Blackwater like maybe once or twice a week. Okay. And that's what I was kind of running. Yeah. It, and, um, and these are photos not to dive too much into this job, but these are photos that you're taking for dealerships for them to put, their inventory on their website or something? Yeah, and just all kinds of websites. Like okay, car, car trader, trader or whatever. Com, like all okay. kinds of shit, so, yeah. Okay, so you're running that for, for two years. You're living with Casey in Danville. She's kind of pursuing her degree in, what is it? Um, dental hygienist. Dental hygienist, which okay. Which is what she does now. And how long does that take, you know, from start to finish for her to? Uh, Quite a while. That was probably like two or three years, I feel like. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, excuse me, um, as she's finishing that, um, the light at the end of the, of the tunnel for elevated is kind of starting to come in. Okay. And so that's where, um, it kind of goes from there. So I'm, you know, we're living the Danville life. I'm full Blackwater baby, um, dipping my toe into wake skating, having a good old time. Winching and, here and there uh, on the side. Yeah, dabbling with the winch, looking for a crew, and just trying to still get it before I'm a geezer, basically. Yeah. Um, and just having fun filming it and, like, pushing myself. And I think um, at some point through the Danville days, like, like I said, I you know, I was trying to film stuff that I was happy with. And had been doing it for a couple of years. Not that anyone noticed. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't get a whole lot of recognition in the wake world. Um, but my videos that I would make each year, I would send to Alliance and Union. And, and I'd get good feedback and shit. And, um, and that really was, you know, the respect of my peers type deal was like, that was enough satisfaction for me. Like, yeah. that was awesome. Like, that was, that was it. That was, that was all I needed. Um. But I, at some point, I was, I guess I was like, I feel like I've filmed enough shit where I could at least try to see if I could get sponsored or something. And maybe somebody could give me some boards or something. Yeah. Um, and so I ended up talking to like Hyperlight rep, Eddie, and, um, and, uh, was like, um, you know, put that out there. And, uh, I, uh, was trying to actually get with Byerly and um, he was like, okay, so yeah, let me talk to Byerly and uh, okay. So he's like about it. Um, he kind of digs your stuff. Like, do you want to do Hyperlight or Byerly? And I was like, I'd love to do Byerly because like Byerly <laughs> fucking Byerly, yeah. dude. I mean, like to me, it was like, you know, you got Hendrix, Bonham, Byerly. I mean, that's the epitome. And so that was just everything to me. Um, He's just, he's kind of always been like my, one of my top heroes. Yeah. Um, which I got the, you know, that was one of my, one of my prime jib experiences to backpedal a little bit. It was just having Byerly out there at one point. I mean, their whole team. And, uh, you know, he brought, he brought, that was one of the sickest things is he brought the wake skate um, out and we uh, blasted that bitch out in the back with some shotguns and shit. And uh, I'll put a picture in of the, uh, he's got it hanging up on the wall here behind the, the wall cameras, here. but I'll put, I'll put a photo in. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, not to, not to backpedal into, into jib anymore, but, uh, that was another thing that kind of happened over there. Like frequently is lots of guns. Cause we had this neighbor across the street. It was like just solid country boy, Mike. And, uh, he'd bring his like off road gator golf cart thing or whatever over <clears throat> like every weekend because he knew there was like foreign people over here all the time. And he just knew it was like, we were literally across the street from this yeah. guy. And so he'd come over and just drink beer and shoot the shit and like, just enjoy like talking to foreigners. And that was the other thing about foreigners. None of them had ever, sh not only shot a gun, never even seen a gun. Seen a yeah, gun. Yeah. 
And so he'd come over with a fucking shit ton of guns like every weekend. <laughs> All right, who wants to blast something? <laughs> and so uh, that happened a lot. But anyway, that's what happened with the uh, Barley Skate there. But okay, but okay, so you're at a certain point, you're kind of looking to at least get hooked up with some boards or something. Yeah, um, I thought that would uh, maybe encourage me to keep keep it going, and, and it did. So you talked to you were talking to someone a rep for Hyperly who was talking to Byerly. Yeah, and he said he's down. Yeah, so you get what you know, board a year. A couple yeah, of I actually years signed the contract, the Byerly contract, and I was like, oh, my oh you signed a contract. I used to frame this. It was basically just like you're only going to ride Byerly boards. I'm like, fuck yeah, it's all my ride. But you know, th- you know, I think that was part of the reason he asked me if you want to ride Hyperlight or Byerly because it probably already knew that Byerly was the as the board brand was on the way out. Okay. So, I think like I don't know how it all worked originally, but I think like at this point, Hyperlight was like manufacturing the Byerly board. I would imagine and, it was probably everything, and they were scaling just using his name. The amount they were making down less and less type yeah. deal. Okay. And so. But I had a couple of barley seasons under my belt, and I was, like, super proud of it. But you had a contract. Yeah. I mean, not like I was making money. No money, but just. But they were giving me. They they were bored under your feet. They were hooking me up. Yeah. Which is really all I ever wanted. Yeah. Um, I never really expected to, like, live off of of it. Yeah. Um, So I was hyped. Um, But, uh, yeah, and that was kind of the end of that. So now a little bit more motivation to, like, film and maybe hit the streets a bit more and yeah. that kind of deal. So that was the ne- the the I guess the last couple of years of my Danville stay. Okay. So and then this is when Elevated is starting to you know kind of become real, right? Become more than a twinkle in Morgan's eye. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So you know, at this point I'm I'm like I said I'm trying to winch and I'm scooting the Blackwater as much as I can. I'm still filming and riding and trying to like submerse myself in the scene. Yeah. Um, even though I'm not around anything. Not around a wake park or anything. Yeah, anything, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, Morgan is uh, hitting me up. And, you know, we're starting to go out and just, like, sh- just go check it out, um, you know, see w- see the progress and all this stuff. And it's like, oh, wow, like, yeah, this is going to happen. Like, this is exciting. And so he starts putting the bug in my ear, like, when are you going to come out here? When you going to come out here and start working? Blah, blah. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like that'd be awesome, but like I've got a real job, and like I can't just leave it, you know. Yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, we're gonna take care of you. Come out here, blah blah. blah. <laughs> and so I'm like, dude, this is really um, tempting, but it's hard to, you know, yeah, you know, here's my folks, you know, from their perspective, just graduated college. Tried to do this fucking wake part thing. Like, thank God he's left that. He's got, you know, he's got he's got a real job. Let's talk 401k. Wake park shit's coming back. What the fuck? Are you you're really entertaining this? Like, and you know, and this this is what I'm thinking that like my folks and like Casey and like just anyone that knows any part of my jib history yeah. would be thinking, like, really? You're even considering going you to You did work? this already, Clark. Uh, we've already <laughs> Yeah, for all you want, shame on you. <laughs> and so that's why, you know, I'm a little hesitant. I'm like, yeah, I kind of got a job going down type deal. But ultimately, um, Morgan tells me what I want to hear, and uh, the cards lay out right. And, and shortly after that as well, all of a sudden, this fucking insane skate park gets built, full concrete, like pff, who knows how many millions into this shit. Um, and so it's like, holy fuck, you know, and, and granted, like I said, I grew up around this area. So the last thing I thought was like, I'm going to move back to this area. But I was like, you know, Casey, I never thought I'd say this, but there's a fucking wake park and there's a skate park. Yeah. We might be moving to Lexington. This is crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, that's kind of how that happened. And so, and you know, like I said, this is another one of the, like, just fucking cards falling into place. I have no idea how. But, like, right as, you know, as, as Elevated's starting to gain traction, Casey is finishing our school. So we essentially trade positions. Like, we were living off my paycheck, and now I just quit. And it's like, your paycheck's kicking in. Um, Not that I wasn't going to make money at Elevated, but it was like, 
the shift is we're happening. good. Yeah. You know, we're not fucked. Yeah. And uh and then that was the other thing too, was like, all right, well, yeah, like we're gonna do it. I'm gonna come out there and we're gonna fucking we're gonna run elevated. Let's do this. And then um it was like, all right, well, you know, we're opening this summer and it's approaching. And and what year is this? Um, if you, if you know. 2019. 2019. Okay. Um, yeah, right pre pandemic. Um, so Casey and I are basically trying to find a house like somewhere close to here before the park opens. Mm -hmm. And that was a fucking nightmare. That was another thing that we just got lucky as hell. I feel like, um, into this spot we're sitting now, but, um, anyway, here we are in Thomasville, 15 minutes from elevated. And, uh, that's kind of set up for the past three years now. Um, been at, at elevated, just finished the third season. Okay, so Morgan brings you on. You finally, you you kind of finally agree. It sounds like you were pretty hesitant, though. To well, to I didn't want to. I I wasn't willing to be poor again. You know, I was like, I'm too old for this, basically. Um, but you know, it was all good. Um, you know, by the time I go out there, it's not like arriving at jib in the woods you know a lot of the shit's already done you know morgan's been fucking digging out there for years now um you know i arrive in time to winch the van at the park before the cables come up and go to the fucking um you know meetings to try and help elevated happen and that was you know that was about it yeah and what i'm referring to by that is um we had to have all these court hearings to try and get the town to approve even letting us do a cable park and that was you know something in and of itself morgan's hollering at all the homies come out and support if you can it's gonna be this wednesday blah blah the hospice is trying to take us down and say <laughs> <laughs> there is a hospice across the street and of course we're all buds now we've done fundraisers to raise money for them and everything but when they you know heard of us trying to open across the street they thought it was the end of the world they thought, um, you know, they were convinced it was an amusement park or like a, something with water slides yeah. that was going to have so much noise and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we tried to tell them, but, you know, weren't having it. And um, so anyway, that was a fucking process in and of itself. But there's always doors to break down. Um, and, and Morgan, you know, did all of that. Um, um, so. Um, okay, so you're, you know, Casey's. Graduated full time working now. Sounds like yeah. And then um, so we're we've got the plan to like all right, we're gonna you know I'm gonna quit the job. We're gonna go to Elevate and we're gonna run this um, Lexington life. And so we found this house and then uh, sh and she finds a job and and then Elevated opens and we're fucking rolling and we're into the uh, newest chapter of my life basically. Okay, um, so when do you do you propose to Casey before you start working at Elevated or is this after? question is actually um yeah i think before before uh, how, how'd you propose to her uh we went to boone and uh hiked up the mountain uh, where you guys met yeah or, yeah sorry. exactly okay yep. that's cool um yep. and then when when did you get married after you know, how so that was actually because that? that was one of the videos i made was yeah, called hitched, hitched. Yeah. yeah which was just because and like uh so, you know i'll, I'll put shit that has to do with um you know whatever big may have happened in my life or something um just as a timestamp type deal and so yeah so that was that one video um where i actually had some of the wedding in there or something maybe and then um yeah that was that okay so that's you guys get married and then um i don't know i kind of want to talk about casey for a little bit i mean i i feel like as you've told you know your life story up to this point she's been like super crucial and a super important person in your life. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, um, had my back like when she didn't have to. Like I said, you know, we had been dating for not long. Like, I mean, like I said, like we were hanging out and like as friends and like snowboarding and stuff like that for like maybe most of the year. But then we didn't start dating until like maybe a month. You know, before I'm like, all right, well, I'm out of here. Yeah, and so. <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, so she was like into snowboarding cause she grew up in Vermont. And so we kind of had that, 
sporting um, bond kind bond of. in common. Yeah. And she had wakeboarded, like, they had a place on the lake as well, but it was a Vermont lake, so, you know, two weeks. Cold. Uh, it ain't like she had really done a lot of wakeboarding. She had yeah. done it before, but that was about it. And then when we were at Jib, like I said, she didn't really ride, like, at all, um, just because – you didn't ride much that first I didn't year ride either. either. And, yeah. yeah, and so and I had I, mean, I had the fucking passion, and I wasn't even riding. So, yeah. um, but damn, if she didn't come out and help us at space tapes, like a fucking legend. Yeah, we'll uh, get we'll jump into space tapes here in a little bit, but okay. So, you guys get married. Um, she's working now, kind of supporting you before the elevated gig kind of kicks off. What is your, you know, when when Morgan comes up to you, what's What's your role that he's kind of proposing to you at the park? Um, he's he's just like, yeah, help me run it. Like, um, help me do everything type deal. And it's just still kind of the the card I play. Like, I'm just like a, you know, wear lots of hats kind of deal. Just, you know. Right-hand man, just anything that yeah. needs to be done. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of like the only full-time elevated employee type deal. And, like, Anything. I mean, I do anything from checking people in and teaching lessons, uh, tons of filming and marketing and, and um, that kind of deal. And um, just, you know, trying to think of ideas uh, that we can get more people in the door, have a better season, have more fun. Just anything I can do to help the park. Like, that's basically my role. Okay. Yeah. Got a quick question here. Wake pants, yes or no? Oh, bro, come on now. I'm a wake pants man, 100%. Um yeah, I mean, if you know anything about me, you know that I like to shout, um, like, essentially, the, like, stuff that I'm into. Like, you'll never see me wearing, like, a, a blank shirt or, uh, you know, or just a wetsuit. Yeah. Like, I got to swag it up, get some flavor, and kind of, like, I like for you to look at me and kind of instantly be like, okay, I can, yeah, I see what this guy's about. I know about. what this guy's about. Yeah. yeah. And, yep. uh, and that's pretty much how I've always ran it. And so, wake pants, yeah. Um, that's just a little flavor for me, uh, a little style, a little swag. So that's gonna be that's gonna be a positive uh, for me. Um, however, I will say that I'm a wake pants like wetsuit season guy. So, well, that's another thing. Like, I don't wear a wetsuit without putting some flavor on top of it. A hundred percent. Like if I'm filming, one just because I like to. Like I said, like express a little something about yourself, maybe, or just have some style or something. But also, I just don't like the way wetsuits look. It's like it looks cold, it looks not fun, and it looks not cool and gangster. So it's it just definitely a, doesn't look gangster. So I it's a hundred percent like it's just it's, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a no for me, dog. Yep. Yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> I, I I totally agree. <laughs> I can only encourage uh, you know people. Dressing all they want. It looks good. I mean, throw some pants on there. If you throw on the wetsuit on, it's a shit ton of effort to put the wetsuit on anyway. So throw some thrift shop pants on top. Hundred you know I mean? <laughs> percent. All right. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I do. Let's. I think it's a good time now to to jump into space tapes, like you were just mentioning, cosmic cahoots. Before we jump in, run me through the the team, you know, and, and how that team came. For out. that, we had um, me and Wes and. Uh, uh, Hubster and uh, Casey and Trey, and um, that was it. That was a killer time. Um, uh, let me backpedal a little bit, actually, sure. though. So, Space Tapes was my second year at Elevated, um, but we still got a lot of shit that happened the first year. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when I go to elevated i didn't even realize that dill's out there with a whole fucking crew of newly formed hungry winchers zmt so wow what a scenario to walk in you know i'm going into this cable park it's like already good to go like let's just start running it and before i'm even there young gun dill out here fucking motivating people and is in the streets, winch ready, like, let's go. I got a camera. Like, we hell, we've already filmed half a video. And I'm like, what, wait, what, what, say, what? What's going on here? This is sick. <laughs> I'm like, all right. So, 
all right, so winching, you know, maybe with other people. This is awesome. <laughs> so um, that was going down, and that was kind of the first year. Um, so, you know, just like at Jib, we had people there helping us out and shit. And just like at Jib, they were more legendary folks. Um, um, we got the Gibster. We got um, Hannah. Um, you know, a, a lot of those are the, the Midwest crucial um, homies that were kind of a part of the ZMT and really just a, a part of the elevated vibe. Um, like that was the crew and we ran the park and, and Dill motivated everyone to winch when we could. Yeah. And that was, um, that we ran that. However, when I got there, like pandemic was rolling and shit's shut down. Like literally before I even left my job, they were already kind of starting to say, Things like, well, your job might not be um, uh, whatever the term was when Secure, they were was uh, essential. Thank oh, you. Um, essential, yeah. So, you know, that kind of shit was already coming around. And uh, so, needless to say, like things were closed. Ideal winching. You know, I moved to Elevated and P2, um, ZMT, Dill's second. Um, you know, uh, effort at filming a winch vid is already fully in progress. Like they had legit already filmed probably like half the video. They were getting after it. I mean, I arrived yeah. and this shit was already in motion, like a hundred percent. And I was kind of just like, Oh, I'd like to just hop in, you know, the shit was already going. Yeah. Um, and so that was sick. Um, but then I kind of got, um, kind of got fucked too because right at the beginning of that season I tore my hamstring um, we were just starting to like film and ride and it, you know I'd been to I look I rode O-Dub and McCormick once over a decade ago so I have rode cable before okay I went to Valdosta a time or two okay so no it's not the case like you know I had a lot of 2.0 time under my belt but the full cable is a different animal. You know what I mean? So I was still trying to learn that whole um, beast in and of itself when I got hurt and the season hadn't even really kicked off. So I'm coming off of the uh, battleship, which is like this rail that, that Morgan designed. That's fucking awesome. Um, it's kind of got like a banana slide set up with a hallway in the middle. And I'm coming out um, on the wakes gate and tray shove – um, front foot on, back foot off, splits, you know, it's horrible. Oh God, you can hear the popping in your head. It's, it's not good. Um, and, uh, so, I mean, I'm on crutches for a couple months, um, on that elevated day. And so yeah, I walk into the, the ZMT realm, they've already got, you know, a shit ton of killer footage. And then before I even get to start filming, I'm hurt myself for a long. So Damn. I'm kind of like at the tail end of the year filming. Um, but I did manage to squeak in the video and I was hyped on it. And like I said, like this was all new to me, just having other people that were hyped to winch and, and hungry to get after it. So yeah, that was like of, refreshing. You trying to be the one to, to constantly yeah, get me, it the old dude by myself, you know, we've got young blood out here that's hyped. So yeah. that was refreshing and like what I needed. Yeah. Um, you know, so that was awesome. And, and it was cool too, that Dill was just taking charge. Like he likes to do that. I, he's good yeah, at it. He's he, good yeah, at it. He is good at it. <laughs> but, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't have to do any of the filming or editing. So that was, that was enticing to me as well. Like I'd never been a part of a film project that I didn't do everything. So I was like, yeah, you know, let me, be a part of something that somebody else mixes together. Like that was exciting. Yeah. And ultimately like they crushed it. It was an awesome winch video and I was just happy to have a little part in it. And, um, you know, I was still kind of, you know, like I said, I'm learning full cable. I'm trying to wake skate a little bit still here and there at Blackwater. And, um, and that was that season basically. Um, yeah, probably like 2019, 2020. I didn't have, like, COVID. I, we started, like I said, like, what I was filming seriously at that point was going to the ZMT. And so that was kind of the, the new thing. Yeah. And then um, 
then we re- we ran that formula the next year as well. Um, we lose Dill to kite surfing, <laughs> and um, but Hannah and Gibbs come back, and um, you know Wes is out here. He's he's kind of coming across an electric winch. We still got some uh, some hype, and so we got after it another year. It was another um, awesome ZMT. I mean, it's um, the best experience. One, I think. I mean, it's I don't know nuts. Um, Major offenses. Yeah, so nature of offense was was uh, the the following year with ZMT, yeah. and uh, we um, just kind of got done running that. And here, you know, here's a here's kind of what we did, which I feel like is a sick formula and might should be worth mentioning. So get a crew together, and you're you're like a band. This is the way I want new young people to approach this because it just seems like it makes sense. So you film all year, and then the next year, you just go on tour with your video. And you go to all different spots, and you premiere it. It's a party every night. And every town that you're in, everyone's hyped and trying to show you their new winch spots. So you're basically going on tour the next year, premiering the video, and then filming the new video as you go from town to town. And you fucking rock every day like a band. Yeah. Anyway... That formula should be utilized by somebody. Take it up next year. Well, I think it should be utilized by everybody. I mean, Dylan and I were talking last night and Jake about, I love all these video parts coming out, but let's not premiere them in the fall and the winter wakeboard videos and movies. Let's let's do it in the spring and the early summer. Yeah, 100%. Well, and also, like, you're if you're going on tour and premiering your shows at a bunch of places that have frozen lakes, like, is no one's hype. It's not helping it's anybody. Not the vibe. Yeah, <laughs> no. You go in the spring and the early summer. That's what you do. I mean, that's that's what makes the most sense to me. So let's let's get back on track there. Film your video in the summer, edit it in the winter, premiere it in the spring, and, and go on a nice little, uh, little tour. But I think the, I think the tours are super important. Whether it's you know two or three stops locally, or you go to Florida, go to the Midwest, you know, on the East here. I think having a real physical like actual experience that brings people together they hang out they drink some beers talk to, shoot the shit like it, it's super important for the culture i think of, of fully agreed yeah so. um fully agreed um i had another point i was gonna make but it's she gone um About, you know filming or like so i don't want to jump into cosmic cahoots yet so it sounds like you want to kind of run through elevated a little bit more there at least and i know you said you tore your hamstring on that battleship rail. I forgot to mention earlier, you've blown your knee out, like, what, three times? I have, uh, twice. Twice. And that is... Um, so there's a pretty good story behind... Essentially something worth... Me- Actually, yeah. Let's definitely a, mention that. It's a pretty good story. Okay, so, yeah, you know, I haven't made it this long in, in my wake career um, without some injuries. So, um, my first one, I blew my, my knee out on blues, but this was, I think, I was already gone from blues i was like visiting alex okay and um it's hot as fuck and if you know anything about blues like they used to have a power plant on there um where they would there was literally like hot hot spot where they would run the water off of their machines and like this it would go into the lake and this part of the lake was like a hot tub and so we're anyway we're talking like it's middle of summer um fucking young i have probably haven't had any water in a week and I go out, and this water is like, I'm talking, the water is so hot that when you fall, you pick your hands up out of the water. It's that hot. So you're not, like, sweating more. Yeah. So anyway, I, you know, am dehydrated, and then I take a serious injury. And so with all that happening, I start to hyperventilate. And all of this is new to me. Like, I, di- I didn't know what a knee injury entailed or felt like or anything or what that, like, how serious that was or like when I started hyperventilating I didn't know what was happening I was like something's happened my body and like I'm losing control like am I fucking dying here like it was pretty crazy so we're we're approaching a dock that and I'm you know we're gonna get out of the boat because I'm like my knees hurt I don't know what's going on um I'm not even really that concerned about it I had no idea how long and painful of a fucking road to come back that would be is this an acl or yeah uh it was gone the whole knee there's nothing there okay yeah like it was so bad that like you know in the time that they tell you before surgery to like 
get it as strong as you can. Like I'm walking around high school and like I turn from my locker and my knee would just buckle. It's like some people are like, I mean, as long as I wasn't like playing football, like I could jog or what, like I couldn't even walk. Like it was very obvious that there was nothing there. <laughs> and uh, so, but anyway, I, um, I get onto the dock and um, I start getting lightheaded and the house that we were going to is up this huge fucking hill. And I just noticed very quickly, like, one, I'm not going to, we're not going to that hill, or like that house. I'm not going to make it. And then as I like start to just like sit down on the dock and like, like what's going on with me, it's like coming on strong, like a fucking acid trip or something. I'm like, I don't know what, what's going on. So essentially what was happening was my breath was increasing and my body was like tensing up and by the end of it and so you know it got bad enough where it was like oh fuck like I don't know what's happening to this kid we're gonna call an ambulance and like via this description um they're like he's hyperventilating um strip him down rub ice on him and tell him to control his breathing so I'm on the dock naked on blues waiting for an ambulance with my homies rubbing ice on me um trying to talk to me Meanwhile, I'm stiff as a board. I mean, every muscle in my body is as flexed as it could be, so much so that, like, even my face muscles were, like, puckered so much that I, like, couldn't even talk. I'm, like, trying to – I'm literally trying to tell someone to uncurl my toes, but I, like, couldn't hardly talk because my fucking face muscles are so – it was really, like, intense. Like, people are, like, uncurling my arms and my fingers, and I'm just, like – it feels like I'm trying to bring them back as hard as I can – but I'm not intentionally doing it. Um, so, yeah, it was a really weird experience. And But ultimately, like, I guess when that's happening, like, it's kind of up to you. Like, you have to slow your own breathing down, like, calm down. But that's what was exaggerating. It's because I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, I'm dying. Oh, fuck. And, uh, but anyway, you know, ultimately, uh, everything ends up being all right. Uh, I calm down. Um, I get the knee surgery. And that's when it's real life. Like, okay, you've got a whole summer of, like, you're not doing shit. And it's, like, rehab. It's painful. And, like, all this shit. And um, I think they tell you, like, of course, honestly, I think they tell you, like, nowadays it's more like a year. I'm not really 100% on that. But back when I got the surgery, it was like, well, you're looking at six months. Yeah. You know, before you're 100%. And so I get done with all the shit. And I'm with the doctor's visit, and I'm like, so I'm I'm good to go. He's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, you're good. I'm like, I can do anything. He's like, yeah, normal knee, good to go. And so, you know, now we're back out on Baden, and uh, this is first set of the season. And I go out, like, we're, we're fresh out of high school with, like, a crew, probably some girls on the boat. I had all the homies. Couple bush ices. Couple of bush ices, like hype to start the season off and be like on a new knee and leave that shitty year in the past. Couple wake jumps. Um, wakes fucking fat because there's a lot of people in it and it was really fun. And I'm like, all right, about to bust a scarecrow straight into a hill seven. Um, come down the scarecrow, bam, knee's fucking gone immediately and like same one same knee i knew exactly what was happening um i heard that pop in my head like i just and like pain wise nothing that meant absolutely nothing to me like i didn't even think about it i wasn't even it was in zero pain like all i could think about is i knew exactly what i was in store for yeah so um, that was devastating to say the least. Um, first setback. Yes, first setback. Oh, um, and uh, so I almost went a, a a year and a half, like straight on crutches and fucking hydrocodone, basically. Um, and anyone that's done anything close to that knows what kind of a mental block um, that can put in your head as well, and and also just like. It just it don't, it don't make it any easier, <laughs> but um, yeah. So I went through that, um, paid my dues a little bit there. Um, 
But that was, uh, um, I was going to say that was the only big injury, injuries I had, but I, I did also break my finger um, wakeboarding, ironically, and this is a pretty lame injury. Well, let's run through that one, though. But uh, I was doing a back three and broke my finger on the handle pass, uh, literally just smashing it into the handle. Um, it felt exactly like I jammed it, and which is is what I had thought I had done. I was like, "Oh man, I jammed my, I jammed the fuck out of my finger." Yeah, I like couldn't bend it, and the knuckle was fat basically. But then, like two weeks later, I was like, "Bro, I still can't bend it, and uh, it still hurts. It still hurts." So we went into the X ray, and he's like, "Oh yeah, you're fucked." Um, <laughs> what finger was it? This uh, ring finger on the right Ooh. hand. Um, one. And so. The doctor told me the awesome news of, well, what we're going to have to do is break a part of your bone. Basically, your your finger broke, and it's now grown back together. So we got to, and it's at the joint. So we have to break a piece of your bone off, spin it around, and then put it in the right place, put some pins in it. Every injury I have involves, like, ligaments and stuff and, like, lots of rehab for some reason. <laughs> I thought for a broken finger, you put a splint on, let it heal, right? and then yeah. you're good to go. No. Nah. Nope. Um, I think it was because, one, that it had already grown back together, and two, that it was on the joint. Yeah. But, so, I ended up with two pins in there and this fucking apparatus that I had to wear while I was in class in high school for, like, most of the year, one year, that was, like, I would, like, you know, I couldn't bend it at all. And so once I could bend it like that much, you would put something on the top that would kind of lace around the bottom. And when you would twist it, it would like Go bend further. your finger more and more. And so the docs basically like, you know, put this on in class, twist it till it fucking hurts, then twist it like three more times and then leave it for a couple hours and do that like a couple times a day until you can like bend your finger again. <laughs> yeah. Did it work? So, yeah. It works. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, yeah, that, and then that was pretty much it until, uh, well, I mean, yeah, I still had some injuries, but none of them were, like, serious, serious. I mean, at jib, I, I probably tweaked or popped my um, um, my good knee um, several times. But you're talking, like, similar to, like, at elevated. It's like, oh, well, you're, you're going to be off the water for, like, probably a couple months, and then you're good. Um, that kind of But you don't get diagnosed or anything? Basically. Yeah. Um, when I hurt my knee post those two, I was kind of like nervous to go to the doctor. I, I legitimately thought that maybe I wouldn't need surgery, but they might say that I need surgery. You know, and just, I was like, you know, we're going to just see how this, this rolls. <laughs> we're going to feel this one out. <laughs> and since then I've had at least two or three similar scenarios where it's like, you kind of, it's. I feel like it's like jamming your finger, Yeah, but it's like you jammed your knee. Like I've had one, at jib where I had the sign ramp coming off the Corex and I got locked in with a switch Ollie that was like too high of an Ollie for me. And I was locked in on the rail and I like literally couldn't bail off of it, but I was in like the squat position. And then I hit this sign ramp at the end and it fucking like compresses me. Like my ass hits the board kind of deal. And like my knee bent more than it could for like a split second. Yeah. And it was like, can't walk for like a couple of months. You're done. And same thing, like, but straight leg, you know, or whatever, like similar scenarios where it's kind of like you jammed your finger, but it's your knee, and it's just swole, crutches for a month, maybe two, and then eventually you're just good. Yikes. Rub some essential oils on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, put the shred salve on, and it's like hope for the best. And, uh, and again, I, you know, I know f- in all these scenarios full on that I could wait a month or two and still have to go to whatever. Yeah. But now that I've done it a couple of times too, it's kind of like, well, that's kind of the way to go now. Build different. But also, like I said, you know, when I blew my knee out the first time, it was very obvious, like, that there's nothing there. Yeah. And the these previous times, it's kind of just like, I don't know, it's swollen. But, I, I mean, it wasn't like 100% a hurt shit pop in my head. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think that's part of the two, just like. You can oh, still we'll use it and feels well, like there's something there. I mean, right after, it was, like I said, you know, like, crutches for a couple months. Yeah. And it would just eventually. Like, even the first year at Elevated, I was, <laughs> I was checking people in, in a fucking chair. They reclined for like a couple months because I couldn't fucking walk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, um, I do. You know, when we're on the injury kind of topic, so in I think it was Cosmic Cahoots, you did a backflip on that mellowed down concrete ledge. 
and you clipped on your heels yeah. and did like a full backflip. Yeah. Any injury yeah. from that at all? Or None at all. Chill. Yeah. Went up and laced it like right after that. I'll throw that clip in. Yeah, that one looked great. Clip. Looked gruesome, but um, all good. Um, I've had a couple of those. I had uh, the same with that fucking clip that um, Hannah filmed on her phone of me trying to dock start off on the skate rail. Oh, yeah. And I have no idea how, but this fucking thing blew up and went viral. Um, I posted it on Elevator's page, and, like, literally after that, for, like, a month, you would pull up the Instagram, and, like, all the notifications just said 100, because I guess that's just as high as they go. Just blown up. It just said 100 for messages and likes and everything every time you opened it for, like, a month. And within like a couple of weeks, it had like over seventy million views or something from like at like hundred million views from like several accounts. And I'm like, what the fuck? And like I mean, people it, that people that I know are like constantly hitting me up, like, uh, is this you? Uh, I thought I saw you today. Like, and I was like, is that Clark? That's just, that's just gold. That's, that's just gold. And like fucking Elevated had like 20,000 like followers or something in a week. And I was like, what the fuck is happening here? Uh, that was a funny one. Though. But that was another one that was like, whoa, that looks brutal. Nothing happened. Though. I was like, totally fine. That's like, the one that I think you'd fuck some ankles or Again, like I got up right after that and fucking did it. Like immediately after that. Same with the, the winch one and the cahoots. Like, Incredible. But that's also part of the, you know, when you take a fall like that, it's almost like, well, you got to do it now because you've got to kill it. Well, and you validated, <laughs> you validated it. Yeah, you, you know, you got the slam. You're going to walk away from that now? No, not unless that's not unless way. you're seriously. Not unless you're again. taking the crutches away. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's let's talk about Cosmic Cahoots because I was talking to Dylan a little bit ago or no, it was actually right after you won. And Dylan was more excited than I've seen Dylan, I think, ever. In his life. More excited than, you know, when he's finished with a part and it's premiered, he sees somebody else's part. And he described you guys winning as Clark finally got his ring. And he was referring to, like, <laughs> getting a Super Bowl ring. Like, <laughs> you put in the time, you put in the effort, you've, you've grinded. How important is winning that Space Tapes contest to you? And, and for anyone that doesn't know what Space Tapes was, it was, like, it was an online global video competition of – it felt like everybody in wakeboarding participated. Well, it was. And the reason for it was because that was COVID year. Yeah. And exactly. that was actually the only reason I feel like, you know, um, Wes and Quinn of Aldosta were the, the brains behind that. And I think, you know, there was no contest that year. So I think they just wanted to have something for people to do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, kudos to them. That was a fucking awesome idea. And I'm, I'm really still surprised at how the whole wake – industry just came on board and, and got after well, it. Well, it's crazy. You, you had boat riders and yeah, cable um, riders you know, and the chorus of core people, everyone was doing it. Yeah. Um, and even crazier still, I didn't, didn't want to do it. I, I legitimately did not want to do it. Um, because I wanted to put all of my footage into ZMT. Yeah. And I didn't want to split my tricks. Um, but that's exactly what ended up happening. Um, <laughs> thanks to Huber. Yeah. He was like, what? What do you mean? Like, no, we got we plenty of time. He's like, dude, <laughs> we got time to do that. We got, to, dude. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. He's like, you he fully just talked me into it. And where I was like, I was like, all right. But like, I'm putting my good stuff in ZMT. Dude. Yeah. I'm like, this is just for funsies. 100%. Um, yeah. So um, we went through how you came up with the team. Um, where did the name come from? Cosmic Cahoots. Uh, we were throwing out ideas and, um, and they were all shitty. And, um, I literally just typed into Google synonyms for space and synonyms for gang and cosmic and cahoots, um, came up and I was like, I'm like, first of all, we got some alliteration here. Second of all, it's got a ring to it. I literally texted the crew and I was like, this is what I just did. I typed in synonyms. And I, you know, I picked these two. They kind of go together. What do you guys think? And it was just like, yep, run it. We're cahoots. And that was basically it. Fuck yeah. It's a great name. Hell yeah, thanks. It man. is. Um, how many clips do you think have been filmed using that Grinch winch? Dude, phew, countless. I mean, we, we use that winch to this day. 
That thing's been around too. It's literally referred to as Old Trusty um, around Elevated. And uh, that's Morgan's old winch. And fuck yeah, it has been around. It's got some miles clocked on it. I mean, it's it's kind of insane. And, you know, there's, you know, oh, we got the electric winch here and there. And now, you know, and yeah, it's awesome. It's It's lightweight. It's quiet, blah, blah, blah. But then when it breaks down, old trusty's always there. <laughs> <laughs> and it cranks first try every try. <laughs> <laughs> you can just count on it. So, yeah, it's big. It's loud. You know, you got to lug it around. But you can count on it. So, uh, I mean, clips and, and formats have been filmed on that. Yeah. That winch up till the new ZMT movie. So, yeah, it's and I mean you're talking even even if we've got an electric winch, we're probably still bringing old trusty. Gotta have a backup. You know if you have a backup, saying? you're gonna bring it back up. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, jumping back in, we were talking about cosmic cahoots. Um, I know there's probably not a whole lot more to touch on. It sounds like you're you're stacking clips for that. We'll still also stacking clips for the ZMT movie. But I think winning that competition is a, or contest, whatever you want to call it, video contest is a huge deal. You know, especially yeah, it, at that point in wakeboarding, it felt it felt pretty sick to me for sure. Because, um, like I said, you have like at this point, all the new age people that I look up to, you know, like I said, most are in the contest type shit. So um, that was awesome, and um, you know, it's not like we won because we did more ten eighties or you know, blah blah blah. That you know, there was some killer teams and videos and like just run, just like we were watching the playbacks of that shit at the shop at elevated and it was like super bowl you know what i mean like we had a shop full of people and it was you know hours long thing while they're you know running through all the videos and talking about them and shit and we're just fucking sitting back cracking beers like this is wakeboard super bowl yeah it was awesome and just for that fact that all the big name boys were in it and I'm, you know, yeah, I've given my life essentially to wakeboarding, but I, you know, I've become accustomed to not getting much back yeah. and just like Phelps said, like wakeboarding doesn't owe you shit and that's true. So I've never really expected much, but, um, yeah, I certainly did not expect to win that. I, I literally told the team because it was kind of like, once we watched the video that I had made, it was like, whoa, this is pretty sick. Um, but I brought everyone down and was like, look, don't fucking, yeah, like, this is fun. But don't get excited. Like, we don't beat Red Bull helmets. Like, it just don't happen. So don't fucking, like, this, I'm, I'm proud of this. Don't get me wrong. It's sick. But don't fucking get all excited because ain't nothing going to happen. Um, and that was my thought process. Yeah. Literally so much so that we didn't even watch the last day, and not because I didn't want to see us not win, but because we had sat there and watched the two previous days live, and we, Case and I were meeting up with my folks for, like, lunch or something, and I was like, you know what? We'll catch this one, like, on the playback we'll at home replay, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, like, no big deal. And we start getting texts and calls and all this shit, and it's like, Something's going on, dude. Like, we might need to... We may have won something. And I'm thinking... Well, there's a lot of awards. There was it. all kinds of shit. Yeah. Like, you, they had, you know, all kinds of shit. They, you know, they gave out prizes for best grind, best fall, best whatever. They had all kinds of categories and shit, which is part of the coolness of the contest. But um, that was kind of what I was getting at earlier. It's like, yeah, we did... You know, I don't think we won because, we, you know, we did more 1080s. We kind of played the by the book well what the i guess i don't know what the parameters of the contest was it wasn't who has the most impressive tricks that wasn't what it was that wasn't the guy Yeah, they had kind of like this laid out rules kind of like a king of the road type deal or something like you're just supposed to you know yeah like there were there were as an outline basically it wasn't just like just film nar and send it in which is what everyone did yeah um you know, if you play by the rules a little bit, it helped out a lot in your favor. For example, um, have a girl on the team. Um, they, they were like, do wakeboard and wake skate tricks. And like, just shit like that, that was so up our alley, it was hard to imagine other teams having 
similar kind of luck because you know I'm at the, you know I'm a wakeboarder in parentheses, but I was pretty heavy into wake skating at, at this point, like almost full on. Yeah, and uh, so I had like literally fifty fifty wakeboard wake skate part, which I imagine is pretty hard for a lot of folks, and that was kind of what they had on the you know sheet as a scoring thing. And then you got Trey, who's an incredible wake skater, yeah. like one of the best in the world. And he fucking, like, you know, strapped on the board and did, you know, he doesn't wakeboard at all, <laughs> but he did, you know, a, you know, impressive thing or two. And we had a girl on the team, which was another, you know, there was, there was guys out there that had no girl on the team. And, you know, they all did 1080s or blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, like, that's a knock against your scoring on what, however they were doing it type deal or something like that. So that's kind of, so that kind of stuff kind of played in our favor. I feel like, um, what well, I think. I mean, there was, what, 74 videos? Maybe you want to check that. It was, it was something around there, 70, 80 videos that were put in. And to win, it like we were saying, it's not about having the best tricks or, like, the best editing or anything. It's about what Wes and Quinn and Space Mom wanted to see wasn't, you know, typically what would win, like, a, a standard video contest. It yeah. was very specific, which kind of, you know, I'd like to talk to them about it, but it's like more revolving around having fun and portraying that. Yeah. And having everyone included in a good time. Yeah. Which I, you know, saw immediately and was part of the like, part of the motivation with the Hubster to be like, you know, maybe we should do this because, you know, I'm not a contest guy, but this, damn, if this doesn't seem right up my alley. Yeah. You know, I like to film shit. I like, you know, it's a video contest. We need we need to do this. And so it was not long before we started clipping up and realizing, like, man, I think we got something here, and we should try to get all we can get out of yeah, it. Yeah, lean into and, it. And maybe do a little more than, like, here's all the clips I didn't really want to put in ZMT. But, yeah. like, I'm basically halving my clips now, which is exactly what I did not want to do. Thanks, Wes. <laughs> the but, uh, are coming in. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, like I said, that was one of the best decisions ever. It's it's one of the things I'm probably most proud of. Yeah, what's that feeling when um, you when you I mean, how'd you find out you won? Were you looking at text? Well, like I said, we video? started getting some texts and shit and I was like, "All right, don't look at your phone. Turn your phone off." Like, we're you know, all right, um folks, uh, we're heading elevated and uh kind of seeing what's happening. And we pull in and it was already like oh, oh cuz they were all watching there. Yeah, cuz they yeah. were all watching it live. And I'm just like, la, 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 don't tell me anything, la, la. And, you know, and so we, go, and so everyone's like, oh, you know, and so it was clear that we had won something. Yeah. But still, I'm thinking. Well, there was, I think there was at least like 10 awards, I want to say. And I'm thinking at most, and I'm literally thinking we didn't get third even. I'm thinking we won one, you know, we won one of the little giggy dudes, whatever. Yeah. All right. Cool. We won something. And then, you know, we're watching it and it's like third place second place and i'm like no way like there's no and everyone they're like t starting you know talking about first place and everyone's like smiling like looking at us like waiting for the reaction i'm like no way dude and they're like cosmic kids and me and casey <laughs> look at each other like what the fuck <laughs> so that's pretty much how that went down and, and and yeah needless to say we were pretty over the moon on that one uh, uh, yeah, probably one of the most proud, uh, you know, wake experiences I've had, honestly. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I don't doubt it. It's that's It says a lot to win something like that. How much money did you guys get? That was five grand, right? I think we got like a grand each or something, grand and each. then we got a fucking board out of it. Um, By Wake and, and uh, Leaf teamed up and gave us a Cosmic Ahoots board limited run. So, I mean, that was that was awesome. Um, a, lot of, a lot of dream stuff coming through on that whole gig um and a little more background on that so i think that was like a i mean we we had like maybe a little more than a month that whole deal was like a month yeah and so i think w like what we did is we used blackwater as our our main spot and okay. we would just i think we would tr like i think we literally i would go out there like on my, cause I would have a couple days off a week for elevated and I would go out there with Wes 
And then as soon as Casey got off work, she would meet us there. And then we were at Blackwater for like two days every week. And then um, we were running that and just like hard film schedule. And um, of course, I mean, it was, you know, it was us four out there dicking around. So it was awesome. Yeah. Just having a, having a blast. Yeah. And then um, we made one winch trip to the beach and, you know, after that, there's, you know, we're probably a month in it with maybe a week or two left. And at this point, it's like, fuck, we're sitting on some killer footage here. Um, like, let's not just dwindle out. Like, let's get all the finish way strong. Let's finish strong, exactly. And so um, I'm convincing Casey to get a couple more winch clips. Because I'm like, dude, I mean, you're like a real member of this team here if we get just a couple more things, like – and uh it's, what a trooper I, i'm talking casey meets like wes and i this was the final week and her last day off and it's raining but she still comes out and we go to two different local winch spots and she gets she clips up in the rain with like days left to film and submit i mean you're talking some legendary shit yeah um but full on i mean it was everyone um you know Literally, as soon as we started filming, Trey lands that fucking front big flip, like, fucking first or second day, which is our ender, <laughs> which is really the way I love to do it. Because if you got, like, the money clip, it makes everything easier as you're, like, fill in the, fill in the easy paces. Yeah, do that every time. Why not? So we had, the, you know, in my head, I'm like, dude, we've got a fucking ender already. Let's do Let's this. Let's snowball this thing. Keep going. And uh, so... That's um and then and then Wes comes at me with you know, he's got it all broke down. Look, it's four minute video. Everyone can only have like ten tricks. You know, he's got everything he's like, look, I, I my part is nothing but bangers. And that's the that's a Huber, <laughs> that's a Huber quote that I love. He's like, I want nothing but bangers. I don't want to have anything but bangers for my tricks in the video. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. But damn if he I mean I'm I, I'd like to say he pulled it off. Uh, you know, it was awesome. Um, and one other notable thing was uh, just Case doing the shove off on the wake skate. She fucking, like. Was that a battle? A, like, full day battle yeah. of, like, eating shit, you know. And I'm, and it, you know, this is all for fun, you know. I'm And Casey don't give a fuck about, you know, this type of shit. And so I'm trying to push her. To like keep going, but not, you know, you're tweetering not on too the, far on the edge of like I'm about to spike this handle and walk off, and I don't give a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, Clark. I don't care about this like you care about this. <laughs> exactly. So it was a kind of walking that tightrope the whole time, but she fucking pushed it out, and I can't really say enough like awesome shit about her and and the whole experience. Yeah, but really, like I said, it was everyone, and we for sure couldn't have done it without like Trey and and Blackwater. And then, and, and Wes, like, just fucking motivating it to, like, let's do this. And uh, he made it happen. Um, but um, walking away from that is just something I'm really proud of. I still feel like it's probably one of my favorite edits I've ever made. And, like, it's just, like, an awesome So time, you, you edited stamp. that? Yes. Easy. And yeah. um, the whole time, the plan was for Wes to make it. And, uh, again, I was like, okay, cool. Something else that I'm, like, proud to be a part of that I don't have to edit like that's cool um but as we kept approaching the due date and Wes was procrastinating and I'm becoming more and more anxiety filled about getting it done and also like all this footage I'm like man I'm like I'm seeing it like in the video needs to go like this and it just got to a point where I was like all right uh you know, I was like, Wes, have you started editing it yet? He's like, no, I'm about to, you know. But I was like, all right, I'm editing it. Everyone send me everything. <laughs> I'm taking this one down. <laughs> and so, we're going to get uh, it down. And I'm, honestly, I'm really glad I did because, like I said, it was, you know, it was one of my most proud of edits or um, type deal. But hard not to when you had that much awesome shit. Right. But, um, you know, I, I went about it by, like, I put, um, I kind of get like, I, I went like formulaic on it kind of like I gave us like a little intro and then I had everyone have like their own little part 
and then I had all everyone's enders together at the end. So it was more of like a team vibe. And it wasn't just like, well, yeah, here's Trey, here's end. all his parts and his ender. And yeah. here's me and here's all my parts and my ender. So it was basically like everyone had their part and then everyone had their two best tricks smashed together at the end. Yeah. Which is good for a four minute video. You can't not everyone gonna have a part in an ender. It would kinda look it'd kinda be weird, I feel like, you know. Right. It's more of a montage but, um, at the end. Anyway, it brought some cohesiveness to it, I felt like, and I was yeah. just like, I don't know, I was stoked on how it all turned out and Trey did like animation and shit for it and um it was just a Overall, awesome experience, and like I said, to have won was just not what we were expecting. It was sick. Yeah, obviously it worked out for you. Good guys. times. <laughs> Taking home a G. Um, this is kind of a vague and, and general question topic. Not a lot of people in our sport do wakeboarding, wake skating, winching, and obviously you've done boat riding as well. What motivates you to, to dabble in all those different aspects? As opposed to just focus on one. Well, as far as boat, I mean, that was the only option when I grew up, obviously. And I don't really ride boat anymore. And not because I'm, like, anti-boat. I love boat. And we've actually gotten behind Morgan's boat, like, a time or two. And, I, pff, hell, I look at it now like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not going to go out behind a G and fucking bust something in the flats. But I can go out behind, like, the mini-wake shit that's kind of gaining some... Steam, like, I, I messaged Drailing, was like, dude, full on for, like, doing this, because this is, you know, I look at that, like, it's like a mini pipe for wakeboarding. It's fun as hell. Um, yeah. Super fun. Um, you, you're not going to go out there and bust a, a 900 behind a mini wake, but you can have some fun. And even better still, you can wake skate on anything. And it's super fun. So, I'm about the boat. Uh, I just don't really do it that much anymore. Um, yeah. More than anything, it's just lack of accessibility to exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but um, cable yep. is all, you know, it's it's like I said, you know, I grew up riding boat and it was like, okay, this is kind of what I'm good at. But then as I go to other things, it's like skateboarding and snowboarding and videos. And it's like riding rails is what's cool or at least what grabs my attention. And so applying that to the board sport that I'm best at was just like a match made. It's just, I just didn't get to start doing it until I'm past my prime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so that was, you know, basically just rail riding on a wakeboard just makes sense for me because I've kind of been on all the boards type deal. And as far as wake skating, you know, I kind of owe that to Trey. Like I've, I'd, I'd wake skated, you know, we took the boots off on a wakeboard even when I was on blues. But as far as actually wake skating, no. Nah. It was always just, like, something to do for fun because I was tired of wakeboarding. Yeah. Or whatever. And I really did give wake skating a solid try um, probably a handful of times, um, especially once I got towards the end of jib. Um, I... Uh, I really wanted to get into wake skating more, but I tried so long to do a flat water clip kick flip and could never do it. And that was extremely discouraging <laughs> to me. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, I'm filming, like, I'm literally filming like tricks at this point. I'm like, I'm starting to get kind of proud of on the wake skate. Like just ran like fucking Rodney Mullen shit that I'm like making up. Um, but I still can't, you know, in my, my mind at, this, at that point, like, you know, I was still just like a 90s wake skater because I'm just in the shove world. Yeah. And I could never get into the flip trick world. But I got Trey to thank mainly for all of that. And um, You did do a plastic to plastic kickflip. How long did that take in the nature of offense? Um, get elevated. Uh, that was actually P2. Is that P2? Um, yes. And that okay. took forever. Um, good God. Dylan's a saint on that one. He was in the hot fucking blistering sun for probably two hours on that guy. <laughs> and uh, But we were all literally kind of like, look, this needs to happen. Yeah. And uh, no one else is going to do it. So get out there and Put kick the work. this booger. <laughs> and uh, I'd never popped nubs off plastic or anything before, which is why that was a, such a grueling process. And once I finally started wrapping my head around it, it was like, oh, okay. Like, I literally landed it, sketchy as fuck, after two hours. And then came around, like, second try after that and stomped it again. 
So it was once like, you figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it was a grueling process. Um, but honestly, I figured a lot of nub shit out even this year, popping off plastic and stuff. And, and, um, it's awesome. Worked great. It literally has that skateboard feel, um, of like snapping the tail and popping the board. And, uh, it's fucking awesome. Like, I went out to do the variable flip for, uh, that's what's actually in uh, Nature of Offense. Oh, what is a variable? It's not, it's a variable, it's not a kick flip? Yeah, kick flip was in P2. Gotcha, got it backwards. Yeah, and Strike then that. Varial, Strike I, that I did it. Uh, and so that was what was kind of cool, because I went out to do the variable flip, and I told Wes, like, go out there with a the GoPro, if you don't mind, like, I'm going to, tr- you know, try this variable flip. And in my head, I'm like, you know, I'm going to give it 20 or 30 minutes, and it's just going to be a learning process. Yeah. Like I wasn't even expecting check the footage to it. later. See what yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, fucking rolled away like pretty quick, um, and so I, you know, I don't know. I was hyped on that, and then um, and that was the second year, and then this year I've kind of gone even more, and I've got lots of uh, nub poppy tricks that no one's seen yet. So and that'll be coming out. Uh, not over the winter, you know how we do it. We don't. We, <laughs> we don't hold that for the, in the winter. <laughs> we hold that for the summer. <laughs> All right, so that yeah. So stay tuned for that because this will come out before that, hopefully. Um, top three horror movies. Oh wow, you put me on the spot there. Yep. All right, um, I got to give it to. Uh, I got to give it to my boys, Night of the Living Dead, and uh, and. Uh, Evil Dead, uh, mainly just because they kind of take on my uh, band, um, like, formula approach. And uh, it's just inspiring to me because they're basically like, oh, we're a group of friends, like, we've got no money, like, let's make this fucking movie. Um, and it turns into a fucking cult classic that, like, literally starts a whole another genre of movies. Like, pff, that's what it's all about. And that's kind of the storyline of both of those two. It's like college friends they are like, oh, let's make a no-budget movie that fucking blows up and that's inspiring dude yeah um so i gotta give it to those two um first and then i don't know for maybe third like i don't know michael myers has kind of been my it's a classic main uh reason of fear as a as a, as a child so uh, i'll go for him okay the OG. all right <laughs> all right let's uh bring back to top three wake movies I know, you're, I know you're a student of the game. You, you're paying attention. Well, to we got to go pointless, and I got to throw out my boys, 12 Honks. Um, 12 Honkies was the first um, video that I actually owned as a wakeboard video, I believe. Um, and it's fucking legendary, too. Like, if you've never seen it, like, I don't know if it's online or anything. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, awesome. they, uh, um, Sideways Films uploaded it. I think it's, I think type in Sideways Films. Twelve honkies that you'll Which find it. So could be a good potter. Oh, um, be a great pot. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, let's tee that one up. If, let's uh, let's yeah. get him on here. Let's tee that one up. Uh, uh, but yeah, that should be online. And even if you're not super into wakeboarding, it's still good. like it's entertaining. All right, and let me go ahead and put this out here: Shane Bonifay, who tells me that you can't put pointless on because YouTube music copyrights i've heard enough of that <laughs> let's get that shit online the kids need to see this wake history what's and it, the worst that's gonna happen shane they're gonna it, take it down come on man it man. literally doesn't exist unless you have the vhs which i don't have anymore yeah, either so i never had it uh yeah let's uh shane can we get that going and uh and other than that, let's see. Man, I had a hand. I had a hand. And let's be let's be honest. It wasn't a wake vid unless it was a VHS DVD. <laughs> pff, that shit. You're you're beyond at that point. Uh, <laughs> Debut was on DVD. Nah, I'm, I'm I kid. I kid. Uh, formats wasn't though. Um, formats, dude. I mean, that's for, three. Formats was awesome. Is um, that number three? Uh, I could put it there. Yeah, it was. It was in you know. Heavy Winch, um, so, you know, some of the first of that, too. So, very inspiring, awesome, like, keeping the new wave going. So, um, yeah, we'll give it we'll give a, the third that's spot. a solid list, I would say. Um, I mean, that's all I've got here. You know, if there's anything else you want to touch on, chop it up down to. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I am out here at Elevated. Come see me. We're currently chilling, going into the uh, fourth season in 2023. And, uh, you know, get your Hyperlite wakeboard, get your Leaf wake skate. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, all I can say really to end it is, like, 
I'm just you know, fortunate to have, I feel to have wakeboarding in my life and, um, and all the people, you know, um, you know, Morgan and, uh, you know, the list of people that have, uh, helped me, um, you know, kind of have the life I got now and, and just thank you wakeboarding and wake skating in general. Um, you know, the cable is my gym. Uh, and I often talk about like, not only the physical, um, like benefit, but also the mental benefit personally that I get from it, just getting on the water and just fucking it's, it's awesome. And, you know, that's part of the, um, what I get out of to this day, um, you know, working at a weight park, I get to just riding on the water, you know, it's, it's an awesome feeling and getting to share that with other people and, um, you know, on the daily and, uh, and keep in the industry and just, and keep riding. I mean, I just, it's awesome. I feel fortunate and I just want to keep it going and keep getting other people into it. And, and, uh, yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, I'm fortunate for you for uh, doing this podcast, and um, you know I feel like Wake needs this, and um, you know it's so inspiring. I, you know I've often wondered if I had listened to some of these nine clubs or bomb holes as a as a kid, you know, would my life be? Would I have tried something you know different? It's possible. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a big deal. Um, and like I said, I'm huge on documenting and history and everything. So. I got a big appreciation for this and what you're doing and just everything, all, all everything about wake and everything. I, I'm, I'm eating it up. I'm still, still loving it. I'm loving, um, breaking the doors down that say you can't ride once you're this old and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, we're going to run this thing till the wheels fall off basically. Love um, it. And that's it. I love it. I mean, I, I know you're definitely one of the guys who you didn't have Instagram, you know, you didn't do social media, you did your yearly vid. So like a lot of people, you're not in everyone's face all the time every year. So, you know, you're not as, I'm not going to say as relevant or as prevalent, but like you just weren't as active on social media. So your name isn't as big as, you know, some of the people who were, but I think your impact has been huge on wakeboarding. And, and I think running through the jib days and, and your history in the sport, I think people, a lot of people realize like, whoa, you know, people who haven't met you and have heard about all the th- all the things you've been around, Jib, Elevated, you know, all the videos. They're like, they might not know you personally, but I think this is a, a really cool, like, insight into into Clark. And you're kind of a, I mean, you are a wake legend. So awesome, <laughs> it, it's cool. It's, I, I appreciate you sitting down. I don't know about that. And telling your story. I do. I mean, I, I think so. So Well, I appreciate that a lot. Um, I really do. Yeah, it was awesome. It was, it was a great chat. Um, Dylan Mead was giving me shit earlier to really emphasize to like comment subscribe and 100%. share all that shit you got to do it it make it means so much it's a free podcast he also told me to say that so yeah if if you guys liked it share it send it to your friends come Clark's, on run Clark's, it up Clark's let's, a legend so let's run this one up wake you know? needs this let's let's back the homies here Atta boy all right that's it. I mean, anyone else you want to thank anything else you want to say or are we good? Um thank you wakeboarding and thank you Hunter the man dog oh my guy all right tune in uh next episode here guys thanks for listening thanks for watching see you next time peace peace